Happy Whiskey Wednesday, everyone. Uh, tonight on the Bourbon and BS podcast, episode 78. We've got a live studio audience here. We're, we're doing round two with the new microphones. I've got two guests with me tonight, Brandon Karst and Spencer Lappin. And Spencer, this is the first time you're seeing this. These uh, microphones were uh, from your contribution, which we really appreciate. Look great, man. Yeah. Hopefully they sound good and you guys remember to talk into them, Brandon. I'll get it okay. eventually. I feel like you're like at a press conference. Like you keep like sitting back and then you're like, uh, no comment. Yeah. No, ask. Can you re- repeat the question? Repeat the question. Times what is the language of origin? Yeah, I do exactly. not recall. Uh, I do want to say uh, we are missing Jake Sanders tonight. Um, we are working out some uh, scheduling issues with uh, with Jake, so he is still very much part of the podcast. We are definitely looking forward to uh, having him on. Uh, in the near future, he started a new position that is taking him away from Wednesday night. So stay tuned for, uh, for I guess, updates on, on what we're going to be doing going forward. We're going to be trying to keep it on Wednesday nights. We're looking at Thursday nights, but we will let uh, everyone know where we're headed with this going forward. But uh, other than that, we want to keep the format the same as usual. So we've got two great guests tonight. We're going to be talking about control. Um, do you actually have control? What is control of certain things in your life or... Uh, See where the conversation goes. So tonight we're going to be smoking the Tatuaje Black Label, which uh, is a bit more medium bottle. We'll get into that from uh, Tatuaje and Pete Johnson. We are drinking a kind of old favorite, I guess, or an old old brand brand called Old Granddad. We're doing the 100 bottled and bond. Uh, so we'll get into that a little bit. I'm not as familiar with this, so we are missing Jake on the uh, the bourbon side. I know Spencer knows a little bit of the details, and uh, we'll look it up hey, a little bit, a little bit. Uh, I want to thank our sponsors, uh, Tinderbox at Easton for pro- providing the Tatuaje Black Label. I want to thank um, Altidus USA for the continued support. We've got one from them. It's a newer one into the shop, but it's uh, the Aging Room Original, which is a rebranding of a very successful uh, blend of theirs. So I'm looking forward to smoking that next. And then also the BS Cigar Company, which we've got a couple of them floating around as always. And we are getting closer on the BS Gold rebranding. Reblending, I guess it would be. Reblending nice. of the BS Gold? We're reblending the BS Gold, yeah. If you haven't been tuning in, uh, we're going with a new manufacturer, um, but we are working with different factories trying to get a, uh, a good blend as close as we can uh, to the original and uh, the same quality. So we're looking forward to that. I've smoked a couple uh, test blends, and then it was, I want to say late last week, I smoked uh, an original BS Gold with two of the test blends, and one of them was really getting close to being spot on. So I'm looking forward to that. Nice. Yeah. So... Bobby Crow says, why the new manufacturing? Basically, that's, as I just mentioned, we are doing something where we had to, um, I guess, part ways with our original manufacturer, Aganorsa Leaf. So I don't want to get into the details too much with that, but uh, we're, we're moving forward. I mean, that's what you got to do. I mean, that goes along with the subject tonight, really, is the control part of it is, you know, some things are out of your control and you have to keep moving forward and, and take control where you can as far as those types of uh, processes. So... Um, I want to say, uh, Spencer, you were on, what, three weeks ago? Three weeks ago, yeah. Three weeks ago. That game, Would You Rather? That was Would You time. Rather. That was a good that one. That was a good time, man. That was a good uh, good episode as far as viewership, too. We were over 4,000 views. Oh, nice, man. Yeah, so that's amazing. So, you know, and that also says, guys, if you guys can share it to uh, any pages, to people you like, I'm going to go ahead and do that now as soon as I can. Uh, without Jake talking, I kind of have to <laughs> try to share it and do all this at the same time. So um, let's start with the whiskey. All right, man. So uh, what we got here is the Old Granddad uh, Bonded. So I'm just going to kind of read the label off to you guys who are listening to it. Uh, Bottled in bond in accordance with Old Granddad himself and the U.S. government. Uh, OGD Bonded is distilled under the requirements of the century-old Bonded in Bond Act, created to ensure the integrity of bourbon, OGD, trademarked, Bonded bourbon is the product of one distillery and one distiller in a single season, barreled for at least four years and bottled at exactly a hundred proof. So I had this uh, reason why. Yeah, that's what you're saying. Yeah, the reason why I was excited for you to bring this onto the the show was I actually had one that was pretty old, and it was maybe a 1987. Old Where did granddad. you find this? So I did not. Someone brought it <laughs> okay. and. I never knew that old granddad was like a collector's item. Like some people collect the older ones and some are very sought after. And yeah. the one I had, you know, I thought it was just a $30 bottle, just like everything else. And the guy was telling me it's like a $300 bottle. And wow. it tasted like pure butterscotch. Yeah. 
one of the better ones I've ever had. One of the most unique tasting bourbons I've ever had. This uh, does not taste like that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've actually had a sip of this yet. Yeah, take a sip of it. So I'm not as familiar with the brand itself, but I know that this is uh, very accessible in the Ohio market. You can pretty much see it everywhere, and I know the brand very accessible. Yeah, and I know the brand is pretty much at most uh, most stores that sell this type of product. Yeah, yeah. What do you think, Brandon? Uh, it's a little hot, but of course <laughs> I haven't uh, I haven't had whiskey in I don't know a couple weeks. So couple maybe, weeks. Maybe it's just me, but even smelling it. Kind of stings the nostrils a bit. Stings the nostrils. Um, but, you know, I like whiskey, so I'll drink it. Does very in-depth review, and I appreciate yeah, that. That's, that's very got. nice. Um, this just basically says on here, you know, again, without Jake being the uh, uh, being here and being kind of more of the bourbon expert, but uh, basically what I'm, I'm reading on here is that, you know, the Hayden family's first commercial distillery was created in 1840. Uh, and this has been uh, something that in uh, 1899, old granddad was sold to the Wathan family, which or Wathan family, which and didn't, you brought some oh, Wathans yeah, that here. Just happened to be a coincidence. Yeah. Who's brought interest in the whiskey business? Later formed the American Medicinal Spirits Company and the foundations of the National Distilleries Group. During Prohibition, yada yada yada. Um, the, this place had facilities in Cincinnati, Ohio, Frankfort, Kentucky. Uh, they also produce Old Crow, uh, Old Overholt which someone was just telling me about, and Old Taylor. So, so they got um, something with the old name is what they like to go with. Right, right. And then it says, uh, since 92, Beam has also been uh, marketed, or also marketed another brand of Kentucky bourbon, Basil Hayden's, named after the same person, which is um, all part of this same family, the Hayden family. It's funny. Some people really like Basil Hayden's, and some people are super opposed to it. But, you know, a lot of places, I think it's, it's like a higher different. end Have you uh, had that, Brandon? Burger. I don't think so. Yeah, man. I think, I think so. it's different. I don't know what you guys think back there. We, we're also trying something new tonight, so uh, bear with us where we have a, 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 a mic for our two producers, um, Nate and uh, Dustin, so they can chime in at any point here. Given what I've heard about Old, or old Granddad, this is actually surprisingly better than what I was anticipating. Because when I used to be a bartender, old granddad was what we called a well drink. Yep. So it was, you know, the cheap stuff that you make. You know, you make it in a mixed drink for three, four bucks. And it's, Would you mix it with, like, Coke or something like that? Or? Typically, something yeah. like that. Just I mean, so someone who wanted a cheap whiskey with Coke without breaking the bank, something like old granddad is what they would go to. And so Were I'm, they all I'm the actually, 100 but, proof ones? It wasn't the hundred proof. Just one a regular yeah, old say, this granddad, one's actually right? Pretty tasty, man. Yeah, that's why I said it's. I'm very, very surprised as to how much flavor complexity there is with this one. I think it's compared to some of the ones we've had on here. I don't think it's like bad. I, I guess I when you see old granddad, you, you think of, or at least I do, when I see like the regular old granddad. Think of oldie. Yeah, yeah. Like you basically like oldie. Like yeah, you think of um, like old crow. You think of like the real kind of like bottom barrel stuff that is just for. You know, mixing or or using on its own, but I have I don't I don't can't recall a time where I've actually had just the old granddad like this right here for twenty dollars on the shelf. I think we've I, I know I've had more expensive bottles that are not as easy to drink as this. I think there's a reason why it's been around for a while. You know, even Old Crow, like people collect some old Old Crow as well. I think those brands are meant to last, and you know, just like the Jim Beams of the world and things like that. There's a reason they're still around. I guarantee there's some people that old granddad is their go-to. Oh, it's got to be. It's got to be. For 20 bucks? Sure. 20 bucks. And it's 100 proof. So, I don't know. I like it. I mean, what do you guys think? Yeah? Dustin's giving the thumbs up. I'm trying to include Dustin here at the, the producer, Mike. We're going to have to get better at this um, with the new setup. But I like it. I think it's really good. Um, yeah. First few sips had a little bit of that heat from it. You know, that 100 proof bonded. But it's got a lot of sweetness to it, a lot of sweetness. I, I feel like the mash bill is really high in corn, you know, mm-hmm. mid-high I can, 70s. I can, I can taste that a bit, yeah. But that heat so, kind of disappears towards the end. I it feel. does. It's a short finish. It's not it, hot. Doesn't, yeah. it doesn't linger, and that's, but the sweetness sticks around. So I think this would be, honestly, a perfect summertime sipper. So that sweet time, go good yeah. with like a sweet tea or something. I can see that, you yeah. You want to mix it? I can see that. Cheap mixer. Brandon, you still you, you like whiskey? Is that you're yeah, sticking with I that? I like whiskey. That's you're, uh, God, you're, you know, you're this, amazing. This will do. I don't think you brought me on for my whiskey reviews anyway. I want to hear your whiskey reviews, though. I want to hear. I mean, you have such a strong opinion about so many other things. Yeah, but flavors aren't really one of them. <laughs> it's 
It's going to be a long first hour, but <laughs> after the first hour. Is it only whiskey the first hour? Uh, it depends. I mean, let if me, you keep uh, let me do drawing it out. more then. Maybe I'll All right, yeah, kick, up a little bit. back. And then BS in the second uh, hour. See, I'm just here for the BS. That's why I'm here. We'll get back to Brandon here in a second. <laughs> <laughs> Brandon's going to take a sit out a couple so plays. I like the cigar. This is a classic beauty of a cigar, though, Crane. The Tatawahe Black Label um, it is something that was originally out I had thought so. This this actual uh, band and everything. The original marketing was 2013, but from what I remember, and we got Tyler Jones who was on the podcast. He's actually smoking one of these. He's definitely a Tatawahe expert. Um, I would say uh, probably behind Pete Johnson and maybe like Dan Walsh and KC. But he's number uh, four. He's he's up there. I'd say top seven. I I would say of people I know with Tatawahe. But uh, it, it was originally out in 2007. Is that is that right? 2007, they did it basically in, in limited production every year in different sizes. The Corona Gorda, though, was uh, was something that they stuck with. 2013, they did it. But every year, it was basically a limited cigar. It was a limited production cigar. They stopped producing it to a point when um, Pete Johnson brought it back out uh, a few years back, actually. And he was able to do it as a regular production cigar in multiple sizes. But the interesting part with the branding, at least, if you look at this one, it's got that kind of shiny Banding. If anyone's familiar with the Tatawahe labels, you're going to have typically more of a matte finish or a very plain paper-looking band on there, like the brown label. The rest of the black labels are going to be more of that that kind of look, where it's like a like a softer, like a, a faded-out black, where this is going to be a nice, shiny one. This is what the original one that they had. They originally were in jars, but now they're going to be coming in boxes. So, so he's kind of tatted up, though, right? Yeah, so Pete Johnson is definitely... That's where it comes from, I guess. The name Tatawahe is... Uh, or I got Tyler with the microphone if he wants to jump in here. Yeah, so the ideal blend of it is actually a Sun Gone Criollo Nicaraguan wrapper, uh, Nicaraguan binder. So I was looking that and up and he's still just rattling it off. Should also, have him over here. So it's, I agree. <laughs> it's a solid medium, medium plus blend, and it's just got a yeah. real nice classic Cuban esque flavor profile, in my opinion. What does a Cuban esque flavor profile mean? To me, it gives you. To me, it gives you that. Real nice sweetness to it, but it also gives you that nice spice that just doesn't overpower you, but it also just eases right into the smoke. I agree with you 100%, man. Uh, does he try to do some different things with the labels? Is that kind of how he really kind of blow up over the past 10 years? No, I, no, no, definitely not. I think with the labels on this, he has typically a very basic branding on, on most of his stuff. It's a very thin label uh, as far as the band the boxes are usually pretty traditional, um, like that Cuban-style box where it's it's almost like that BS box on a lot of them. Some of them are just the slide tops. Uh, but he, he always has, in my opinion, as far as the product himself, he's been more of the along the lines of, of just, just that. Very basic, very straightforward, very good cigars, good tobacco. Um, he became close with Don Pepin Garcia. That's where all this stuff is made, is the My Father Factories. And when he first came to Don Pepin, he said he wanted a strong cigar, and that's what became the the brown label. I like the sweetness of the cigar, actually, with the kind of the sweetness of the old granddad. I know, Do you? I know every now and then you don't try to necessarily mix them, uh, but I think that they actually go well together. You know, the sweetness of the cigar and a little bit of the sweetness of the old granddad I actually think goes well together. No, I can see that. Brandon, you want to uh, throw out a? Uh, I just throw out <laughs> just things like at a press conference. Like, oh, sorry, yeah. yeah I'm, uh, what was the question? Yeah. Just a Tatuaje in general, um, like you said, real basic as far, real basic as far as the. Um, <laughs> is on? Can you repeat the question? <laughs> yeah, right. Brandon, you're good. You're right. you're on that. Uh, mic. We need lights up here, like they have in Congress. Um, okay. Anyway, Tatuaje has always been one of my favorite brands. Um, partly is the basic labeling that they have. It's not fancy. They're not trying to show off with the labels. They just make good cigars. And I've never had one that I was like, this is terrible. They kind of stay in a nice range of just not getting way out in left field, trying to do stuff weird or fancy or whatever. Just always good smokes, always simple marketing, and it's always good. So, Yeah, I would say, I mean, the same thing. I mean, when you look at Pete Johnson, though, he was kind of a, of a like, I don't want to say revolutionary figure, but it was just way off the grid as far he as what was. He created a culture yeah. it was the thing. It was like a, the tattoos – black t-shirt like not Vegas. not being fancy um yeah it was just he, he kind of started the magazine culture i guess 
like the culture. Well, yeah, a lot of like a lot, f- for those that aren't familiar with it, if you look in like a cigar magazine, a lot of times you'll see, especially in in the last five years, when you see a Tatuaje ad, it's not the cigar. It's literally just Pete Johnson with with the tatted you know sleeve arms and and then it's just a list or, or pictures of, of all of his brands underneath him yeah. and he's just standing there in like a, a a warehouse or a factory basically just standing there leaning up against it and it was he was the, the the brand it wasn't the cigars the cigars spoke for themselves that's always the way it is i think with the marketing of any product is that you want to make sure that at first and foremost the product itself is good so that if you're going to be marketing it in any way if you're going to do a face which is what he became um you're going to actually get someone's attention but when they smoke it or they drink it it's not gonna be shit see if we can do any ads with you know good looking girls who have no. tattoos or anything like no that? i've never seen that actually okay never seen that robert crow bobby crow says what kind of leaf of it? it's a criollo uh nicaraguan nicaraguan criollo sun grown criollo so that's criollo is the, the the seed basically of the type of tobacco yeah so you like it too? I mean, you said you like it, Spencer. I, I think it's enjoyable. My whole thing was, when did you start with the uh, the Tinderbox? I started with Tinderbox six and a half years ago. So this is probably about six years ago, Crane. You may or may not remember this. We had an event at some hotel mm-hmm. outside, and it was us and a few buddies. And uh, Pete Johnson was there, and I I knew nothing, less than nothing about cigars. And uh, Pete Johnson was there, and he was just mingling with the people. Yeah. And I remember asking him uh, what cigar shop he worked for. Because you didn't know. Because I did not know. Yeah. He just kind of went with it, and then a few buddies pulled me aside. Do you know who that is? And I was like, Yeah, it's Pete. He works at one of the Tinder boxes. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> and uh, he just kind of went with it. He so, actually nice, did start. Nice I mean, that's nice yeah. He started in the industry at a, a cigar shop in Los, Los Angeles. Is the, is the story, and then he meet, met uh, Don Pepin, and then they basically started blending together, and then that was you know fifteen some years ago. And, you know, I, one of the reasons I picked this cigar, so I, I kind of wanted to go off on a little thing here um, about what Pete has recently really been uh, spearheading, where there's a, a new documentary. Uh, for those of you, that you bourbon, bourbon people, the cigar people, the topic people, um, there's a new, uh, we talked about Neat, that, that bourbon documentary that's very good. What's it was called on? Neat. Uh, I want to say you have to buy that one still. It's on Hulu, it's on Hulu now. So. Get on like iTunes? Uh, you can get it on iTunes. Okay. Um, so they did a really good job on Neat, and we've talked about that before, and I, I think that's a very good one to watch about bourbon uh, and whiskeys. There's a good Irish one. There's a good Scotch one. They did a, a, a movie documentary called Hand Rolled, and uh, Pete Johnson is the executive producer of it. And this is about an hour and a half long. It's available on iTunes right now. I'm hoping that it makes its way to um, to uh, Netflix or Hulu or something like that so it will reach a wider audience. I bought it. And, uh, you know, I hope that no one in the industry would be mad at me, but I played it several times in the shop so that I was encouraging people to watch it at home if they're just popping in and out um, or just to learn a little bit. Because Pete John, the, the, the story I had heard, and I don't know what kind of facts, and again, Tyler's been uh, pretty tight with that crew a bit, but that it was originally going to be like kind of a, um, not a promo video, but kind of like a, a small documentary about his brand, about like some of the FDA stuff which we've talked about on the podcast before, but it turned into a full-blown documentary with like a lot of the who's who's of the industry, including Don Pepin, which that makes sense because he works tightly with him. But some of the people we've talked about recently, some of the families like the Placencia family we talked about with their cigars. We talked about the Padron family. Um, you got Quesada on there. You've got uh, the Newman family, which we've talked about uh, in recent Are episodes they as well. With each other? Yeah, I think it's, I mean, from what I understand. Like cartel? You know, no, it's not like that, I don't think. I think from everyone that I've talked to in the industry, it's it's basically going to be everyone is helping out everyone else. It, it's the what I've what I've noticed is that a lot of these these families and everything that you, you hear the the tobacco has like a a Cuban heritage as far as Cuban seed. Most of the families, if you look at their family history, they they truly are tied to Cuba at one point of their generations recently in the, the recent 3 Three generations, basically. What do they smoke in, like, Europe? Mostly Cubans. Really? And that's slowly changing from what I understand. But, yeah, mostly... In Europe, a lot of them are... They don't even smoke the premium cigars, mainly. If you're talking about premium cigars, uh, yeah, mostly Cuban brands, just because that's what was dis- uh, distributed over there, or dis- distributed over there. It's it's something where they are... All these companies now, the Nicaraguan, the Dominican, the Honduran companies, are really making a push to get into the European market. 
But a lot of the Europeans are actually smoking more of like the cigarette size little cigarillos. I mean, that's that's basically what they just they go through like cigarettes, from what my understanding. But I, I like this documentary. And I think that it's something that people should check out. It's it's four ninety nine to rent, and then it's uh, uh fourteen ninety nine to buy, and it's really well done. Like I said, and you learn a lot about the history of Cuba. You know, some of the things that you know I know Brandon's really big on history, and it's one of the things that we talked about. When talking about some of the families recently on the podcast, but it was the fact that, you know, at one point they went from Nicaragua to Honduras, and that was a main part of that. I thought my original thing, and this is just me learning still at this point, but a lot of it was based on the Nicaraguan government with the families, where, where mostly it was the Reagan administration at one point basically uh, boycotted and, and, and did an embargo on Nicaragua because of what was going on in that country in the 80s. Yeah. The Sandinistas, most likely, is who was in control. Yeah. Now, now we got them going. There we go. We got them into history here. But so that was one of the big things is that so then they had millions of cigars that were in Nicaragua or in, yeah in Nicaragua that they were starting to really produce at a higher level, and then they couldn't get them out. They couldn't get them to the U.S. because of that that situation. So they moved operations to Honduras. Then that was lifted. They went back to Nicaragua, and like it's just a great documentary that I would recommend to anyone out there. Have you? Has anyone else seen this? Have you guys seen this? What's it called? Hand rolled. I've seen it about six times too because I played it in the shop that many times on, on repeat. Is that the one you can get on Hulu or is that? No, that's neat. That's going to be the one where um, that's the one on Bourbon. This one is, is brand new and it's on iTunes. Okay. It's on Amazon. Okay. Do you know if it's included in Amazon Prime or do you think it's just something? I think right now you, you have to buy it. I think that's where they're trying to recoup some of their because they don't have a big contract with anyone. I mean, that's, that's what I know. But it's definitely worth watching, and, and that's one of the reasons why we haven't done a Tatuaje in a while. And I, I, I like what, what Pete Johnson has done. I like my father's cigars. We've talked about the Garcia family many times on the podcast. But something with the, the, the hand-rolled uh, documentary, I just think that it's, it's something that it's nice to have something out there that they highlight a lot of the Cuban uh, heritage. They talk about the, you know, the, the movements between the countries, going to Miami, like the Padron history we've talked about, the fact that you know at one point uh, – you know, he went back to Cuba, had a, had a meeting with, with Fidel, and shortly thereafter, and I'm paraphrasing, but shortly thereafter, like, he, he started getting bombs basically blowing up his fucking factories. And, allegedly. No. Allegedly that it was... That it was uh, okay. No, there were definitely bombs. <laughs> You're saying allegedly from, from that meeting, but uh, I think it was. So, um, it's, it's, it's cool to see all that stuff and, and to learn a bit more about it. I mean, that's one of the things we talk about on here, and I know I learn every week, so... Do you call this a uh, medium body? Definitely medium body. What do you think, Brandon? I agree. It's medium. It's it's a little, I don't even want to say spicier, but um, it's it's on the border of, like, somebody that's just getting into mediums might consider it full, but with the whole spectrum that's actually out there, it's definitely medium. Maybe at the heavier end of medium. Yeah, I'd say medium, medium plus, but it's just a really well-balanced cigar. I think Tyler's right, man. It does have some spice for sure. Yeah. I think it goes really well. I mean, it's so funny. Like, I think this cigar is great, and then, like, the old granddad, I did not know what to expect with old granddad 100. I was uh, not anticipating anything, so I was pleasantly surprised. They, do you like it? I do. Yeah. I really do, man. It's I, easy drinking. It's easy drinking and, you know, half a bottle gone, so everyone else seems to be enjoying it as well. Uh, but, it's, you know, it's, a, it's an easy drinking for 100 proof. You know, it's, it doesn't have it's as not, much I don't think it's much heat at all. Had, and uh, it's nice on a 90-degree day. Got Nate wanting to get on here, our, one of our producers. We're doing again. Like, let us know what you think of the the. the well, Bobby talk Crow here. had asked a question. Yeah. First, he asked it. You know, would you like to? And I think he's referring to the BS project. Would you like to pair up with Pete Johnson? Which I said Pete uses the My Father and Papine Factory. Then he rephrased it. He said, if you could partner up with anyone as part of the BS project, is there anyone you would like to partner up with? Who makes the black and milds? It's the black and mild. Uh, that's Middleton's, I think. Isn't yes. that? Yeah. Not Jameson Middleton, but Middleton's, yeah. Um, who who would I want to work with? Well, I saw so I've I've actually learned a lot, and I know Brian has as well, who's the B part of the, the um BS there. Uh, working with, with Agonor Salif or Casa Fernandez as they were called, I say for the most part it was a great experience. I mean, it was something that they got some of the best tobacco, uh, in my opinion, uh, coming out of Nicaragua. So that was a great experience. It's unfortunate that it ended the way that it did. Um, I'm not a big fan of the way that it ended the way that it did, but uh, 
again, I mean, that's out of your control, you out of my control. Can't yeah. Control it. Yeah. You can't change what happened. That's the big thing I want to get, you know, introduce in that part of the topic. Move on, um, man. It'll be better er- than ever. Eric Espinosa has been an absolute treat to to work with on the BS Silver. That that has I've learned a lot from working with Paul Palmer. I learned a great deal. I don't say more or less, but I mean just more in depth, I guess, uh, working with Eric Espinosa. He's been um, he's very straightforward guy. He's very forthcoming. He's very uh, willing to share his knowledge in so many different ways as far as the tobacco, what goes into it. And he doesn't even grow any tobacco. He's, he's, he's buying tobacco. He has to know what tobacco that he wants. He's also running a business, you know. So he's, he's I, guess, I think he considers himself still like a boutique brand in a sense, but he's definitely blowing up. Are you trying to match it 100%? Well, I don't want to give away too much, but, yeah, I mean, we're, we're trying to, to match the BS Gold. That's the main uh, um, target there as far as that goes because it was such a good blend. still is, and I'm sure, you know, if you, if you look hard enough, I bet you Costa Fernandez or Agonor Salif is blending that, that same cigar for someone else. I'm sure that blend is out there. I don't know what it would be. I've got a couple ideas on what they have that's going to be really close to what we were doing the BS Gold. But I would, yeah, I'd love to, I mean, if, just like anything, you'd love to be able to work with some of the, the, the major factories, major players. I would love to work with, with someone like Pete Johnson on something um, with this. My father makes some of the best cigars, in my opinion, coming out of Nicaragua. Uh, I'd love to work with any of those guys. I feel like there's like that's one of the reasons I like that hand-rolled documentary is that you – you're having these interviews with these guys, and they're again being very forthcoming. They're talking about the history. They're talking about the struggles, the some of the successes they've had, and everything with that. So, um, I don't know, Bobby. I think that uh, I think if I had to pick one person to work with, just all encompassing, and he's he's you know Dustin saying Pete. He's talking about Espinosa. He's talking about uh, Ricky. Those guys would be so much fun to to work with. Um, but if I had Maps would say, I'd, say, I'd like to just, there's not one person in particular, but I would love to work with like a, like a General Cigars or, or Altidus, our sponsor Altidus, because they have such like a, a wide range um, of, of tobacco, of factories, people they're working with. I would say right now, one person that I would love to be able to spend a week with would be AJ Fernandez. I think AJ Fernandez right now in the cigar world is, I mean, there's a reason that everyone is working with him. I mean, I think that I, I've said it before. I think AJ Fernandez is basically going to, like, he is today's version of Don Pepin, where Don Pepin about 10 years ago was, was absolutely just everything he touched was gold. I mean, everyone wanted to work with, with the My Father Factory, and they still do. But now you've got the, the moment where AJ Fernandez, you see AJ Fernandez on all different brands. He's, he's making, he's got so much tobacco apparently. He's got uh, several factories and he's able to produce all of this, this great stuff for everyone from, again, like, like you're doing Monte Cristos, Romeos, you're looking so at. Look at the Patels uh, at all? I don't think he works with the Patels. Patels got his own factories, but he he might you know have some some ties to that. I'll tell you what, I was over at Burn over in uh, Pittsburgh the other week. Yeah, I've heard Nish great things. Is, uh, they're killing it, man. Nish is great, and that'd be another one that'd be fun to work with. What are you thinking, Tyler? Cool. He froze. You can't see it, but, <laughs> but Tyler froze. He's got the mic right in his hand, and he froze. I wish he, he was on camera because that was really funny. Are right, you ready? Yeah. You think? Okay. You sure? All right, here's Tyler again. So, like, the 2000s was the decade of Pepin, pretty much. And now you see in the 20, 2010s, it's pretty much the decade of AJ right now. Yeah. And I think he's going to easily like Pepin going to the next decade and the next decade and just keep killing it. Well, it makes you wonder what, I mean, AJ's going to do like Pepin has done, where he's just got brands upon brands, and then he's working with all these other people. So it'd be interesting to see if he starts snatching up other companies, too, at some point, if he has any interest in that. You know, as we continue to go down the road of the FDA side of things and and seeing how all that develops, if there are some more boutique guys that um, aren't able to pay to play, as as they say, it, it would be something where, like, a guy like AJ Fernandez has enough income now that he, if he sees branding he likes he may buy that up or he may just stay strong to his roots and just basically say no everything i make is going to have a, at least a secondary band basically or it's going to be somewhere on the box that it says aj fernandez so this is right up brandon's alley have any of the tariffs affected any of the cigar brands it's not really tariffs as much as it is fda regulation i mean recently years it's fda regulation and yeah there there have been some 
at least branding changes. You've seen um, some of the big companies bringing back out what they call the predicate date blends. So if they were on the market before and they had discontinued them, that they have brought uh, back to the, the – basically brought back to the, the shelves some old brands with, with these tobacco blends that they've used before. I love Brandon. Brandon, we need to get Brandon. This uh, is the hey, most quiet I've ever heard or not heard from Brandon. Brandon, he's quiet in the entirety of my relationship with him. I'm I, just, I'm not trying to control you guys. I'm just trying. Uh, yeah. to control that is so that happens in the second just hour. Sit back, yeah. I'm there was an episode if you guys love, love ever you guys. saw the um, the episode that uh, Josh Porter was on. I think the, not this last time, but the time before that, where he literally just sat. We had four people on, and for about an hour and a half. The second hour and a half, he just sat there. And that's just, great for radio. I know. I was on that one. Were you on yeah, that one? I was on that one. Oh, that's, he just, that's what he I, fell asleep. So, he no, was I, snoring on the thing. <laughs> he was not snoring. I think he was. I don't think so. But it was one of those that he, like, afterwards, I was like, Josh, what the fuck, man? And he's like, I just really got tied into the conversation. You guys, I was listening to you guys. I was like. Oh, it's great to have him. You're, <laughs> you're, you're not in the audience. You're actually on the podcast. So it is a, a bit different. But. Well, to. Touch on your point. I don't think any of the tariffs hit the countries that cigars are coming out of. So, oh, that's the tariff. Point, I'm that's the tariff. Where did you I, think I was talking about? I thought you were talking about like tariffs on, on actual tobacco. Like yeah, the, the FDA thing is going to have a bigger effect on the U.S. market than the tariffs because the tariffs, I mean, he's targeting China, Sorry. Europe, things like that. I saw uh, possibly uh, France. Possibly. Well, France, with wine. yeah. They, they tried to tax our. Maybe it was our wine. I forget. They, they tried to tariff something, and he was like, fuck you. I'll just tariff your stuff too. Not to go political to start it off, but like he you, had one of the best lines I've ever heard. He said, uh, you know, I've always liked American wines more than French wine. I don't drink wine, but I like the label. <laughs> I, I saw that, too. <laughs> that, 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 that was, was that top a, ten kept line. rolling with it. He was yeah. like, yeah. Was that a tweet or was that a speech? That was a speech. I like our yeah. labels better. Yeah. Perfect. I mean, you got, you got to buy for a reason. Covered, People buy you know? for different so, reasons. Yeah, better labels. I can't read theirs, so. Three-dimensional chess. Yeah. <laughs> Three-dimensional chess. All right, so. I, I like the pairing. We'll, we'll, I'll wrap up the first part of this. I mean, I like crowd. whiskey and cigars. So you like I'm whiskey good and with cigars. It. I like it. What's the consensus around the uh, the garage here? Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Well, Nate, you don't count then. Dustin, he's doing something. All right, cool. Uh, studio audience is talking to each other. That's perfect. But with the new microphones from Spencer can't hear, you can't hear and the mixer boy, I mean, yeah, you can't hear any of those guys talking. This is perfect. perfect. As long as that one's perfect. That's going to reverberate. Uh, you want to save it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And file save. Uh, so while we're saving it, uh, Facebook, Kylie, who was in the shop way too much in the last two days, um, she says, what's the effing topic? Yeah, she was in today. I'm trying to get her on the podcast. She is not allowed, apparently, to be on the podcast. According to who? Nat Sherman. You have the control. You have that. to control. She can go under an alias. No, she actually. I'm interested to see what she contributes. You have tonight, uh, so. blurring technology. You could blur her face out. We yes, but it, Kylie yeah. doesn't want to lose her job. Yeah, yeah, she's got a job to do. So go ahead and, and hit that. With with Kylie being on, um, it's interesting because she actually kind of uh, inspired. I guess you can say this this topic for for tonight is is control, and it was like kind of what kind of control do you actually have? And and you know she. Uh, it's interesting because she has an interesting history, and I'm not going to get into it a whole lot, but, like, when you actually meet someone, you know, especially in, like, a business role, yep. um, you know, the first time, and, and this is something that, you know, Spencer does for a living also, and we've talked about uh, that the fact that you are in sales, you, you handle accounts. Are you touching? He's trying to touch me. It's nice. Um, <laughs> but... It's something that the first time you meet him, it's like it's all it's all business. You try to be friendly, and then all of a sudden, as, as you do business with someone longer and longer, you start having actual real conversations. Oh, it, yeah, it's real it's almost inevitable. Yeah, it's 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 it becomes it's not it's a networking thing. It's a business relationship first, but then as you you get to know those people, you get to know like you know family or what they do outside of work, all that stuff. You know, so we we had an interesting conversation, in my opinion, last last night, and then a little bit today. But um, <laughs> it's interesting that to me that. I've been uh, frustrated and in, in, in nothing in particular, something but there in particular. something in particular. But for me, I'll, I'll say this: one of the things that I've noticed is that I don't 
like it when I feel like I don't have control over a situation. I don't want to call you a control freak, but you like having as much control of outcomes of your situation as you possibly can. As much as I possibly can, yeah. And I, it's, it's frustrating to me, especially, and I'll, I'll get into the drinking part. So that one of the things that I, I <laughs> no, I, I'll say this. Um, it's one of those things where uh, recently over the, the weekend even, it's, it's on Saturday I went to uh, one of our guys' um, – Steve's voice seems higher. Okay, good. Um, but uh, you can control that. I can control that actually. Um, no, but we were over at uh, Barnes's birthday. It was a 70th birthday party, which you know, happy birthday, happy Barnes. Happy birthday, man. Yeah, um, and we were over there, and I, so I went to the gym in the morning. I I went to work all day, open to close, and then I went out to meet all those guys out in Pickerington, which is about 25 minutes away. Long day. At 11:30, I got there, and I drove home, and I was I was more or less conscientious of how much i was drinking it was over a long period of time it was over like five or six hours um but i had i had the when you drive home at four o'clock in the morning and i'm groggy i'm just absolutely out of gas not basically it's it's not a great idea but more importantly i i it's not like i don't remember driving home it's not like i was really worried as, as much at that point it was the next day i was absolute a mess. I was I was a wreck. You know, not, I was a waste. More. I wasn't like a, I wasn't throwing up or anything. I was just I was a waste. Out of your routine. Out of my element. And as as everyone has told me and told everyone else that as you get older, it's it's something that you know you don't bounce back as as easily yeah. as quickly. Twenty five is where that hit me. Yeah. Twenty five years old. The hangover recovery went from a day to two days, three days as years go on. So, um, and sp- especially when you miss the sleep too. Sleep, yeah, when your sleep off. pattern screwed up and hung over, when you're over 25, 30, ruined day, minimum, yeah. maybe two. So, I mean, when you, when you go through all that stuff, you're not yourself. And I, like you said, Spencer, you're right. I, I'd say you're a creature of habit. I'm a creature of habit, but I also think, I think the majority of people would, would like to have a bit more control over the outcome of their situations. The best they can. And sometimes I feel like that's where the anxiety happens. That's where stress happens. That's where everything else is, is rooted from because you don't have control. Things are going sometimes better, but a lot of times I think it, it's for me, it's I, I get frustrated when it's like I feel like I'm doing everything I can correctly and, and then I get frustrated and then I don't take action and I go back to my days at, you know, my, my previous career. I don't like, you know, the way that that all ended. I don't like the way that the BS uh, Gold Project has, has hit, and hit this obstacle because it's something that I thought was going well. I thought we had potential there. And then when it all said and done, it's, it's the decisions made outside of my control. And then everyone, including, or to me at that moment, mo- most importantly, I have to roll with the, the, the consequences or basically what's what's thrown in front of me you without con- any control over or it. Or you can't control how they react to you. You can only control what you can control. You can only control what you do, but you can't control how other people uh, react to you. Yeah. 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 You get, it, it, once you've lost all control, barring mental illness, completely hopped up on drugs, drunk, whatever, you get to a point more and more common as people get older, I think, where – the only thing you can control is yourself. Yeah, and it's funny you say that. The it's, whole world is maneuvering about you, and you can try to control it, but you're going to get rolled over, or you can just navigate it, control yourself, and and try to make it through it rather than trying to barrel through it or control this, this, and this. I got to navigate this. I got to navigate that. And that's all you're left with, but you are left with that, again, barring mental illness or whatever, so... You know, I think getting comfortable with that space is key yeah. to not losing it when you do lose control because you're going to lose control of the situation. Being for sure. comfortable with being uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah. When was the last time you guys felt like you did not have control of a situation that you wanted to have control over? I'll, I'll go a quick business situation. Sure. I, yeah, I absolutely. Had probably the biggest business meeting of my career last week. And it was all the heads of the companies, the owners of the companies. And they said, hey, can you meet on Wednesday in the middle of nowhere, Pennsylvania? And they did not say what the meeting was about. So it could have been you get fired. It could have been you get a raise. Could have been you get more customers. Could have been you get less customers. Right. And I had to wrap my head around. This is one of the situations I have 
zero control over. So whatever is going to happen is going to happen. I have control over how that situation happens afterwards. What was the mindset going into it, though? I mean, mindset like, did you was feel that, that hope for the that best, controlled? hope for the best, expect the worst. And this is a, my mindset was this is a situation that is out of my control. Yeah. And I can either play the 10 different scenarios in my head and drive myself crazy or just realize that this situation is out of my control and just deal with the whatever whatever cards are dealt to me afterwards. And I was at peace with whatever was going to happen during that meeting. Before going into before it. Before going into it. Because that was one of the situations that is out of my control. You know, it's the powers that be. It's, you know, I have bosses and their decisions affect my life. And I was just going to be like, whatever happens of this meeting, I'm going to make the best of it. Yeah. The, the cards happened to go my way. That's really good. But I was expecting that the cards couldn't go my way and just deal with it whatever way it goes. I think that's really great. I mean, I know that I struggle with that. Um, I'm, I'm sure I'm not the only one that you go into these situations and, and things you're not sure the outcome of what this this big thing is. You know, like someone, it's that classic thing where someone says, you know, uh, um, we need to talk from oh, business or romantic. But they don't say or what we need to talk about. No, like, well, what do you want to talk about? Well, no, um, I'll talk to you. That's I'll talk worst. to you tomorrow about it, or I'll talk to you later in the day about that. And you're just like, and talk you're just to like, me now? Well, what? Well, yeah, that, just get it out. That thing and what you, I'm sorry. That's <laughs> what Steve you just said, and what Spencer said earlier. It brings up, I think there's a there's a difference in there where both of those are unknowns. You go into yep. your meeting. Unknown. It was an unknown. Your scenario. Fear of the unknown hey, is, is hey, the I absolute gotta, worst feeling for me. You. So it's, it's not even that it's necessarily out of control at that point. It's just because you may walk into a situation where they're like, Spencer, you're the shit. We're going to give you this territory, that territory, that territory, make your choice. Or, so it could be, or it could be a situation that, you do have control. It's just unknown at that point. Yep. So I think that there's there's a difference between facing the unknown yeah. versus a situation where your boss is coming down on you, your wife or girlfriend's coming down on you. You can't yeah. – it's a situation where you know the factors, but you don't have control over them. I think it's a different space to be in than just the unknown. Yeah. And it's, it's it takes a different way of dealing with it sometimes. Sometimes you have to gain control of those factors – with the unknown, you just have to kind of like you did. You basically relinquished control that you never had in the first place. That's exactly right. It's a you mindset. Know? Yeah. Well, you can, you can. I think you can dive back a few steps though, or several steps. Is that everything leading up to that? I mean, you, every, again, we've talked about this this before, way back on the podcast, where it's something where everything you do leading up to those situations, it's too late to really do anything about it at that point, right? I mean, so it's like you you hope that you've done your due diligence, you've lived. And, and basically executed in the business aspect is like it can still not go the way you you don't want it to go. It can still go that way, but and you don't have control over it. But at the same time, it's a lot better knowing that you have, to your your knowledge or your feeling, that you've done everything you can, the best you can, you know, as opposed to, oh, well, I slacked off here. Like, I've done this. Like, oh, maybe they, they saw that my numbers are down a little bit because I didn't hit these accounts as, as often as I should have. But I thought everything was cool. But if you know you were doing everything and it doesn't go your way, it's kind of like, well, there's nothing else I could have done. I mean, would you say that's no, how say you that, feel? No, that's exactly right. And then even, you know, with some accounts or with the guys who sell used cigars, you know, they could have the best sales pitch to you in the world. But once they leave the room, it's up to you to sell the product. It's not up to them. They just kind of hope that they do their best job. And then it's kind of up to you to do it. You know, one of the things, and I'm obviously not a part of it due to the alcohol in front of me, but in, in like AA it's, you can only control, you can control and you are not the center of your own universe. So I think as long as you can at least have that mindset to realize, Hey, the world doesn't revolve around me. I'm just kind of a part of, I'm a clog in the wheel. You want to be a bigger clog than, than other people. If you can, you want to have less layers. You want to have as much control as possible. But uh, if you can relinquish some control, it's almost like, all right, man, I'm just kind of going with the flow and whatever's going to happen is going to happen. And I just kind of deal with it from there. I found that a lot of times one of the things that I struggle the most with, and I think those are all good points, but one of the things that I struggle the most with is um, when I know other people have looked at me from the outside and I know that that I want to be able to change my behavior because they're right. And, and more, more frustrating for me is, is 
realizing that you don't have control over other people's actions. Like that is zero that is a, control. That's zero a very, control. I, I realize that it is zero control, but for me, it's it's something that you you almost like you keep. Tr- at least I I, tr- I try. You know, you try to like give as much. I try to give as much, kind of keeping them in in the right path, or or you know what I mean. Trying to give them more knowledge, you know, so that they they can make a decision. And and it's it's not necessarily manipulation. I, I lead a horse to water. You try, and it's it's a very frustrating feeling not to. And not trying to manipulate or control someone else's actions. It's just the fact that you, like, just realizing it's, for me, it's a very humbling experience. And, and Brandon, what do you think about, like, when you, because I, I know that you have a different stance on as far as other people's actions. Yeah. One thing I want to say, I'll answer that, but when you, when you. You can pick up the microphone if it's easier oh, for oh, you. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, whatever. Nice. All right. Just don't oh, bang it on the table. Oh, yeah. that's good. Yeah, there you okay. go. How's don't that, touch, don't touch that, that microphone, that bro. Yeah, how's that Does sound, that Nate? Give me 10 seconds. All right, okay. give me 10 seconds, Andre. Just we'll try it here. the whole time. Go ahead. All right, here's, here's what I was going to ask following up to yours. Is, that was 10 seconds. <laughs> Just keep is going. that a red light? Um, yeah. When you, when you well, face... Talk into the microphone. Uh, Don't use it yeah, as a I prop. Talk, I can't talk. You can't, like, wave it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to go all Italian on it. And <laughs> yeah. stand now up. you're talking to the microphone. Take now he's just, like, waving take it a, around. Take a walk. Just pace back and forth. Um, sorry. Guy walks into a bar. Do you want me to hold it? Yeah, can you do that? I'll hold it for no, okay. you. When you, when you. Okay. When you face that kind of feeling of... Whether it's helplessness or lack of ability to control others, is that primarily in the course of trying to steer others on the right path, trying to help people, or is it like, good question, whether it's a business adversary or a difficult customer you just like to get rid of, um, or is it primarily an event you see that somebody could do better, you know what the answer is for the most part, at least for a specific scenario, and you know that you're utterly helpless to keep them from getting hammered and driving again or going back to the same girl that's ruined in her life or you know i think it's saying? all of those things i think it's all those things i mean i'll say when the, the from the business aspect or of the it. tent event when you had no control what was going to happen so yeah okay for me that that's interesting you bring up the tent event because that that is a business business venture if you will is a business thing that went on and, and for those of you that aren't familiar we do a, a annual that's what's on my, my t-shirt here <clears throat> we do an annual event and we, we sell out 300 people. We got uh, 10 to 15 different vendors. We uh, work with another business on it as far as the tent itself, catering and all that stuff. And we, we, were, we were basically getting shut down uh, two years ago. So it was a six year we were doing it. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's funny because when I'm in that situation, I, 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 I don't want to. Survi- I'm just gonna say, you went into survival mode a little bit. I went into survival mode, but I just took control. It was one of those things you, that you, you know, took everyone, fucking control, bro. Everyone said like, "Oh, you, you know, like that's a situation where it's out of your control." It's like bullshit. Like that. That was it. Was out of everyone's control, other than the fire department, basically. And I don't. I don't know exactly why. It was just one of those things that it was just like, "All right, no fuck, we're gonna figure this out right now." Because I have too many. That's one of those situations where there's so many people. That I saw, it wasn't just the fact that oh man, we'll never be able to do the ten event again. It was like no, we have fucking three hundred people here, and two businesses relying on this event, and this is absolute bullshit. So let's figure it out on how we can make this work. And it was talking to the people, the powers that be, which is the fire department, and it was talking to them about hey, what can we do? What do we need to do so that I don't have to send three hundred people home and everyone's day is ruined. Because I know that's not I, I know that's why you're that, that's not why you're here. You're not here to ruin everyone's day. You're here because of safety, safety. because of everything else. So let's let's kind of just kind of weed through it all and figure out what we can do for that situation. And where they're coming from is completely different than where you're coming from. Absolutely, they, they got their job to do. You got your job to do. And let's let's figure out how to wait, make everyone happy. Yeah, yeah. And to, to to Brandon's question, so when it comes to business, I think one of my biggest frustrations as far as not being in control is that knowing it's not my place. So. Um, you know, there's, there's typically, even if you're the owner of a business, there's someone above you, whoever you put above you. And it could be people like your front, everyone's got a boss, everyone's Everyone's got a boss, boss, even if you are the boss. Um, so when, in all my different stages of, of, of my career at uh, my previous job, it, it was something that I would, I would be frustrated that I didn't sometimes have control over, um, what the powers that be. Where, you know, they were the ultimate say. So even I could, I could plead my case, I could show them the facts and be like, this is a fucking no brainer. And then they would do the opposite. And then whether it succeeded or failed, it was just, it was frustrating as hell because I gave it my all. I gave you all the information. Like this should be something. It's a no brainer to I'm, you, but not a no brainer to them. Right. And, and they may see something that's outside yeah, of what my scope was. They made a different vantage point or yeah, something absolutely. where. 
Absolutely. their way made sense, even though it may have been wrong. And then the, when you look up from the other side of it, when I, you know, had employees that you were trying to help and you're, you're trying to, you know, talk them into, like, you see them messing up, like you brought up the, you know, if you're, you're driving home or you see someone drink and then drive or something like that. It's like, you see someone just absolutely like struggling with money and then they have the opportunity to, you know, work and then like their attendance is bad or they, you know, they just call off or just fuck ups over and over. Yeah. Again. They keep fucking up and it's like, can't, can't save everybody. You can't. And that's, that's a control thing too. You know, it's funny. I don't think of myself as a control freak or anything like that, but I, I, I like the way you said saver. it. You like, saver, you like to yeah. save people. I do. Or at I least do. give it, give every opportunity to point someone in the right direction. That's why I use the horse to water. You yeah. know, you can obviously kind of bring them, give them every opportunity to help themselves. But at the end of the day, it's up to them to help themselves. Yeah. And, and one of the things that I've, and I've said this before on the podcast, one of the things that uh, a friend of mine taught me a while back, and, and it, it's something as simple as... His name's Brandon. His name's not Brandon. <laughs> Uh, he has he has he has taught me a lot of things over the years. I've known Brandon for a long, long time, but um, he has not taught you anything. He has taught me a few things over the years. Actually, we've had a lot of good conversations. But no, this other this other friend, you know, he he said to me, um, and this was just simply after uh, the the fact where, you know, it was one of those nights where I, I I we were out like drinking and everything like that, and I said something stupid, and I kind of remembered it. And he and it's something as simple as that. It's actually resonated on so many other levels. Where he said, "He's like, what are you? Gonna, you can't change it. Yep. Like you literally can't go back to last night and change what you said. Apologize. You can apologize. That, that's that's the big thing. It's like like we it. were talking about. Like yeah. Well, and that's the thing. You you can dwell on it. And I think I know I have uh, I dwell on things sometimes because I I you can't change it. And and realizing that and and you get to be able to to move not move we had that moving forward and moving on topic a while back but it was something that when he said when i don't know why i had to and i think a lot of people may have to hear that from someone at some point in their life is like look, look you can't change it it sucks like but that's you, you got you got in a car wreck you know what i mean you were stupid you you got fired because you knew you couldn't you know like not show up to work on time again and you did it and now you are not with a job or you know um, you look at certain things in life and, and, you know, I don't want to like bring up, this is not necessarily, but like, you know, terrible things that you, people might do, you know, like, Oh, you cheated on someone you care about like that. That's terrible. You cannot change that. Cannot change it. Yeah. So you have to move forward with it. Agreed. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> well, I think one, of, one of the things that there came you up in my thought when, uh, when you're talking about you can dwell over things, you can get, um, just stuck. anyone can one can you yeah. get stuck in that loop drive yourself crazy and you just it's like you're stuck in a time loop where you replay it then you're like oh fuck i'm i'm sitting on the couch now and yesterday i said something shitty then you yeah. replay it yeah and then you feel guilty and then you replay it over and over and over again yeah one of the and i don't know where this is going to go or if it's even related but i I'll love th- it i'll throw it out there Let's see if it sticks one of, one of the i don't try to control a lot so i don't feel out of control a lot of times. That's or, an interesting very, statement very in itself. Honestly, that's an interesting statement. Um, one of the one of the times I do feel out of control where I get actual physical anxiety, and it doesn't happen yeah. often anymore. It happened when I was younger, is when I would look at what I've accomplished up to this point in my life. Then I'd start thinking about what I'd like to accomplish and how long it'll take, and say, I think, well, you know, I'm I'm 35 now. And in five years, I want to, you know, have gone to Hawaii and Japan, bought a house, and done something else that takes some time to do. Right. And then maybe you start thinking about the next five years, next five years. My mind would get to the spot where, all right, I've added these five. Yeah, or fuck, th- you're 85 years old now. Right. Or I'm, I'm, say I'm 50 years old now in my head in this scenario that I'm playing out. But then I pop back into reality, and I've only accomplished what I had when I started thinking. Yeah. And I get this deep feeling. I used to. I, it doesn't happen as much more. But you don't smoke as much weed anymore, do you? No, not as much. Yeah. But I get this deep feeling Next of anxiety. Week on the Bourbon and Weed <laughs> podcast. <laughs> I would just be like, oh, shit, I'm 50, and I've only accomplished as much as a 35-year-old. And it's I fucking depressing. completely out of control. I'd be yeah. like, well, it's fucked. It's over. Can't do anything about it now. But I, I think it's the same type of feeling when you're actually in the moment. And there's things going on around you. You see it a lot. I, I, I like uh, cop videos on YouTube. 
cop videos. Yeah, people either fighting with the cops or getting arrested. Why are you sweating? I was watching cops. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you'll see, you'll see that with those people where they just utterly panic. People get pulled over for a speeding ticket. Yeah. They're like five miles over the ticket or over the speed limit. And it's like a 30 minute breakdown. Well, the bag, and of, her- it, oh, the bag of heroin doesn't help. Uh, no, yeah. Yeah. Heroin. yeah, that's right. No heroin. They just go completely off because they don't have control. Yeah. And then it escalates it. And now that you've fucked up the one thing you did have control over, which was yourself. Yeah. Now more. Now the cops like, well, fuck this guy. I was going to let you off. Now we're going to do a sobriety test. Now yeah. you're more pissed off, and then it escalates and escalates. So that when you miss that moment to control yourself and react conscientiously to your situation, you just escalate the lack of control that you have because more parts of reality start piling up against you. Well, and to that, I mean, like we're saying the the key word so many times, but you you have lost control of of yourself. Like, of your behavior. And that's when you've really lost control. Yeah. And alcohol can obviously play a role in that. You guys ever watched Black Mirror? Yeah. I, I yeah. A little bit. Okay. So the new season, I didn't know, man. Fair enough. So there's an episode <laughs> where, uh, where you something. can replay any yeah, instance in your mind. Yeah, that was a weird so episode. there's a guy who go, literally goes crazy because you can replay, oh, my girl looked at that guy a certain way, and you can replay that in your mind a thousand times, a thousand different ways. And kind of drive yourself crazy. Can you build on it then? Like, oh, she looked at him, then she went home with me. Looked at him, then she got his number. Looked at him, then she got his number, then she banged. Like, That's exactly you, right. Build, you build, you build, can build. play all the scenarios in your mind. If you look at every situation, you know, this, this conversation where, oh, I should have said that then. Yeah. Or, Why was she looking at him then? You can drive yourself crazy by replaying situations in your mind. So you can either go back and realize, hey, I can't change that situation or how I reacted to that situation. Right. Or you can realize, here's where I'm at now. I have control over now, but I have no control over the past. That's a really, really tough reality to, to swallow, in my opinion. It is a tough reality. It is deep. I mean, Tyler t- said that's deep. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't have a microphone to freeze in front of. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's deep. <laughs> Shit, I, I what I I forgot what I was gonna say. No, it's. I think it's a harsh reality because I know I struggle with it. I I, I know people struggle with that. It's it's because it, it's hard to turn off. It's because, hard to turn off. Yeah, I I think that's something that um, if you're trying to continually. Uh, better yourself you know or, or strengthen certain areas of your life some sometimes it's it's you keep thinking about mistakes you keep thinking about things in the past i got a random question so when we were playing that game a few weeks ago the would you rather would you rather yeah did you rethink of some of your answers no no so that was just kind of is what it is like oh i fucked up that game I fucked up that answer <laughs> i was thinking about the little mermaid thing for a while I don't know if you do you know what I'm talking about. Hey, yeah, yeah, breeze over that for us here. Like, let's, I'm not gonna let's, breeze over. All right, go after it. It's it. to go down a dark path. Yeah, I don't doubt that. Uh, pun not all intended, right. but it was all right. Well, do I want to fight a bear? Or do I want to fight an alligator? And here's like the two different ways. Alligator. <laughs> Interesting. On land or on water? In water. In water. Probably not on water. Well, surface tension. Uh, all right. Yeah. Would you rather fight a bear or an alligator? Alligator. All day? Just a single alligator? Well, or, not or a, a whole group of alligators. Would you rather fight a group of bears or a group of alligators? Well, bears are like cannibals. They're not going to fight together. And alligators are not? Eh, they are, but not intentionally. <laughs> not intentionally. Now, yeah. would you just do zigzags? I would be like I'd run away. I would just do zigzags. No, bears, bears will catch you. Bears will catch you? Yeah. Revenant? They run like 30, 35 miles an hour. They'll catch you. I don't think that's real. No, that's 100% true. I'll show- you got to talk in the microphone. I'll show you some videos later. <laughs> Wait, what, hunt. about that? Yeah. Okay. Bears chasing, not people, but things down. <laughs> 35 miles an hour. Bra- Brandon miles is an hour. currently uh, obsessed with uh, animal videos. It's a different no, Google it's a, search. It's an Instagram page that I follow. All right. Bears Wild running fast. Uncut. Do you comment and like? No, I don't I don't you put just, it out there on the internet. I don't want he, Zuckerberg knowing my thoughts. He, he, he ghosts their page. There <laughs> you know. All right, Nate's got, what, you got questions you said? So there was a little bit of back and forth between uh, Bobby Crow and Kylie, but I think they both brought up some good points I think you guys could touch on and talk about. All right. One thing that Bobby talked about was if you have control, there's also responsibility that comes with having control. True. Okay. But then also Kylie also chimed in. I'm going to kind of paraphrase with her, but um, 
when you don't have control or when you relinquish control, you are accepting that you're not in control of everything or that the way things happen aren't always up to you in situations you don't have. I think that's the only way to go about it. That's the only way to regain control is to recognize your lack of control wherever it may fall. But you also have to realize at the same time that you do have control over something like what you brought up with the 10 event. Yeah. You could have just said, well, fuck, it's out of my control. We're shutting down, guys. Yeah. You sought something out. First, you had to control yourself and not punch anybody in the face. Jameson. Secondly, you had, that was to, a good move. You had to seek out whatever avenue or whatever item or, or factor in the scenario that you could elicit some control over. Maybe yeah. that, that comes in the form of talking to the fire marshal saying, what can we do? And opening the door to him to, yeah. to give you a solution. So, so you have to – I agree with what Kylie said. You have to relinquish the control that you don't have or at least recognize you don't have it, but then regain what you do have control of. Because when you initially lose control or feel like you're losing control, it's like letting go of the rope when you're water skiing. It's just fucking over. It's all momentum, and it's going in whatever direction it happened to be going in. You've got to stop and regain control of – conscious control of the things that you actually have control of. Number one being yourself, and then – seeking out whatever it is in your environment that, all right, I can elicit a little bit of control here, a little bit here, and try to make your, your situation better. I'm going to go two different directions, and I'm going to ask both of you. First question first. Have either of you been white water rafting? Yes. No. Yes. Okay. Have you ever fallen out of the raft? Multiple times. Okay. And what do they say when you fall out of the raft? Don't fight it. Go with it. That's exactly right. Trust your vest and – Try to make sure you're still breathing, and we'll come get you. Yeah, you don't go swimming towards the boat or anything. You give into you give into it because you have to give into it. You're either going to give into it alive, or you're going to die, and then you've just given in anyway. That's exactly right. It's a very hard thing to do, especially when you're in a stressful situation. But it is give into it, kind of go with it. Yeah, go with the fact that you have no control of wherever the river is going to take you. It's going to take you, and hope for the best. But if you start to freak out, if you start to grab onto rocks, you start to do all that stuff, that's when you're in big trouble. The second one, you is guys that a ever, metaphor? No, no, no. It's a it's a real real thing. I know that's that a real is, thing, but I mean, you know, you, I mean, one of the few times I thought I would die was falling out of a raft because you don't know what's gonna happen. You hope for the best, but truly anything could happen. Yeah. The second one is this is more a sexual route. You thought you were going to die sexually? uh, I'm going sexual with this. No, have you? Okay, go ahead. Yeah. You guys ever been uh, tied, had your hands above your head? I haven't. I have not. I thought you were going to go the autoerotic thing we were talking about earlier. Jesus Christ. So I'll go with that if you'd like to. You have complete control of that situation. I I haven't done either. All right, all right. No, no, no. Stick with your – go ahead. Go ahead, Spencer. So I think – So there you were. So there I am earlier tonight at Steve's (laughs) wonderful house. And he's got this set up in the basement. You guys have – what you were doing before I got it? You guys have to check this out. It is a dungeon down there. See, I don't want to talk about it. (laughs) My point is, is that's one of – if you're with somebody that you trust, you have no control of that's what he or she does to you. Yeah. And you can either roll with it. Very inclusive of you. <laughs> super inclusive of the group included. 2019. <laughs> and all you right, can. So, so, all right, you relinquished control in that scenario. You can relinquish control. So you control. did. No, no, you control. did, though. You, you're supposed to. If you want to enjoy whatever's about to happen, you're Was it worth to. it? Of course. All right. As long as you trust the person that you're with. Okay. How long did you know? How many hours did you know that person? So, his name rhymes with Meve Crane. We're going to call her <laughs> Becky. <laughs> Becky Crane. <laughs> All right. What's a question that uh, Brandon uh, brought up? I'd like to, like to go through that list, actually. Well, let's not go there yet. Let's not go there yet. That'll be the lightning round. <laughs> that will be the lightning round. Just because someone throws a ball at you doesn't mean you There's have to physically there, catch it. There is I like If you that, can catch actually. a ball, you can catch a wrench. If you dodge. No, Kylie said that to me actually the other day, or actually t- it was today or yesterday. Um, just because someone throws a ball at you doesn't mean you have to physically catch it. You can dodge it. You can whatever. dodge it. No, it's just Smack one of those it things. It's, it's, if something is, you know, if someone is presenting you with the, the problems or, you know, like they're basically coming to you or you're trying to save them, you're trying to control like that situation and they throw it, you don't have to necessarily catch everything coming at you, which Actually, is, is, I, is something that I think is, is a very interesting concept that I didn't think about because I would say, you know, to Spencer's point earlier, and, and Brandon, you know me well enough, that I typically am trying to catch that ball. You take the bait. Yeah. 
Well, you're yeah, trying you to control it. the ball once you catch it. Yeah, yeah, I don't want it to hit the ground, for sure. I, I came across a, a scenario that's applicable to that, both of those things, really, what you said and what Kylie said. I was, uh, I was helping a coworker out with, with a deal I think earlier this week, and I do, I do underwriting for business loans. We have to deal with salespeople all the time. They don't understand underwriting as well as we do, obviously, because it's not their job. Mm-hmm. So when you tell them something, often they'll come back with something that makes absolutely no sense. Like you'll give them like... To, to you? No, at all. To somebody that understands math and things like that. It doesn't make sense. I know you're a sales guy, so calm down. I know you guys can do math, but... Not well. Yeah, not well. <laughs> and I know you mm, fudge it a little bit. Ish. Ish, okay. <laughs> a lot of ishes. So anyway, all right. we're, we're going through this deal, and we looked at every various scenario of how to get the deal done. Nothing worked. The cash flow wasn't there. The guy didn't have enough money. It just wasn't going to work. Okay. And she hasn't even made a decision on the deal, declined it, approved it, whatever. And she's already fighting the appeal with the sales guy over uh, instant messenger, just back and forth. He's like, well, what about this? Well, what about this? Instant and, messenger. Instant. Um, AOL. AIM. Uh, I, well, my, I, my Skype. Own. Skype instant messenger. Yeah. Um. So anyway, I, I just keep telling her, I was like, what are you doing? Stop responding. And she's, every time he would, his thing would pop up, she'd get on there and, what do I say? She'd say something back to him. And I just kept saying, stop responding. The best way to handle a situation like that where somebody keeps throwing something at you is just is silence. And it, you can do that. Are you I, removing yourself from the situation no. in that circumstance? Well, or you're just literally like... Are you, you hoping that you, the answer comes in the silence if you just wait long enough? No, it, it's a matter... It's, it's like putting a period on the whole thing where they want to continue kind of picking like, well, what about this? What about this? What about this? And eventually, at least from my perspective, eventually you see, you see questions that come through and I start thinking, I'm going to have to explain to you why your question doesn't make sense explain the question you should have asked that would have made sense, explain to you why that won't work either, and then explain everything I've already explained to nail this thing shut, and I'm not going to do that. I've told What's you... What's your mo- move? Uh, it's dead silence. Whether it's on instant messenger or the phone, if I tell... So- it's some- a power move. If I tell somebody something... Silence is a times, power move. Yeah. Silence is always a power move. If yeah. I do it two or three times, I tell them this is the outcome... And, well, what about this? We can't do it because of that. Well, what about this? No, this doesn't work because if you change this, then this changes. It doesn't work. Well, what about this? Just keeps going because they, they, so, want, they want to get their way, right? They want to get their it, way. It just worked. I, w- I was silent for two seconds. You had to, you had to fill that silence. I don't silence. think that's, that proves your point. I, think, I know what you're saying, though. Yeah, no, that proves it. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, that, that I think that's is. That's uh, one point that, for Brandon and uh, <laughs> zero points for Steve on but, that one. The, the metaphor of not catching the ball. Silence is good for radio, too, by the way. It is. It's good. <laughs> yeah, but the pressure was on you, not me there. <laughs> true enough. True enough. But the, the, uh, the metaphor of not catching the ball, it's real hard not to do it, especially when somebody throws the ball at you. And, yeah. it, and the same thing on the phone. Like, I know what you did. This is not a phone call where a sales guy is trying to – get an underwriter to do a deal. So it's a little different, but no, you're on the the same same track there. You're on the same track. I've said the same thing over and over and I'm not responding to what you're saying anymore. You get the point. You get the point better than any of my words could confer that I'm done. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's the big, what'd you want, Nate? But how much harder is it to not catch that ball when it's being thrown to you by a family member or a loved one? Or no. someone really close to you. It's it's definitely harder, but it also it it's it's different than the business scenario that I gave as well. I don't disagree with Brandon's point that, uh, or if you give it silence, you might have a better answer if you wait that extra half second. Yeah. Well, some of it is is informing the other person because they're going to try to play the same game. It's basically you know the staring game only over the phone. Who can blink first? Right and. It's going to force them into silence. And if they're not jabbering the whole time, just saying whatever, because most people, they don't plan out what they say. They just say it. They, they react, and within a split second, their mind put the word together, boom. Are they listening to you, or are they waiting to hear well, that's themselves the other, the other, speak? Yeah. Well, that's the, the main thing is the second one. I mean, because, most people are doing that. But if you enforce silence upon the conversation, 
all of a sudden you're not talking, they're not talking, and their mind is catching up to reality that they've been putting off with all their jabbering. So Steve Jobs used to do this a lot when he would be asked a question, and it really kind of befuddled some of the investors and things like that, where he would be asked a question and then would be silent for... 30 seconds, silence for 30 seconds, silence for a minute. An uncomfortable amount of time. An uncomfortable amount of time. He would think about the answer before just responding. And he would hear what the person said, listen to what the person said. And then if he didn't have an answer, he would wait that extra five seconds, two seconds, whatever it is, before he responded to give a more thoughtful response. Well, I think that's something that when you were talking, Brandon, when your your salesperson, right, is is coming back with all these scenarios, they're literally just trying to. It's like a it's like a child. It's it's basically they're going to keep. They're not. They're not. They're hearing the no, but they're not re- really listening to the reasons. Yeah. So it's like, all right. So what if we do they this? They want what their result. This? They want it. To, they want their answer. They, that's all they're doing. And so they're just they're just rapid fire, right? Yeah. So when you do the silence thing, I think there is a, a bit of a power move to that, and I. There's there's plenty of examples of that. There's movie lines, you know. It's like whoever speaks first is going to lose, you know, in a sales situation. That's right. Hand on the pen and shut up. Yeah, yeah. But um, th- there's times where it, if they, if you're giving your 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 earnest like the earnest effort of of actually having a conversation with someone, and, and, and it has to be both sides. We're not talking about an argument. I saw candy on here. You know, it takes uh, it takes two to argue. So if you want to stop, then take control. Uh, and stop. Also, people are scared of silence. I mean, it's very, very true. I like that Steve Jobs uh, example you're saying because what I take from that, and you combine it with your side of things, is you hear it's like it, almost another response to your salesperson. Be like, all right, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna answer each one of your. What if we do this? It's gonna be. I tell you what, give me all your scenarios. You know what I mean? I'm not gonna like keep going back and forth with this. Give me all your scenarios so then I can look at them. And then I'll, I'll get back to you. So it's not just a, a back and forth like you were saying this, this person, your coworker was doing. It would almost be a uh, better control of the, the conversation with the ability to like actually have an outcome of the conversation as opposed to just people like storming off because they didn't get their way is just say, send me everything you got. And then I'll, I'll let me You'll look at it. I'll get back decision. to you here. Yeah. Let me let me let me look into all those things. It's, a negotiation. And it's not just like blowing them off. Like for you, it's like you already well, know the answer. Well, we already did that. In, in my yeah, you already know that scenario, situation. But I get what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a simple a way of, of taking that, that type of silence, taking control of that, where you have to be confident. And if you're, you're actually doing that, if you're actually thinking about it, you're not just doing a power move. You, sometimes you can combine the two concepts, but you're, you're, you're having that, that thought process of let me think about your question, and I don't want to just rattle off my you know, from-the-hip knee-jerk reaction because most people do that. Like, think about like a job interview. You know, you, silence in a job interview, if you do it the right way, similar to that, maybe not 30 seconds or whatever, but if you actually sit and think about the, the, the question, it depends on or the question. Or repeat the, 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 the question. Interview. That's a good question. Repeat let question. me repeat the question and let me, get, let me stall for a couple minutes so I can give you the right answer. Repeat the question, or that's a good, good or question. Or let me, take, let me take the no and realize how to deal. All right, so no's the answer. That's where we're at right now, and then kind of go from there. But at least you get your answer one way or another. Yeah, that happens in business. It happens in, in, in friendship. It happens in, in romantic relationships. I mean, you're not always going to like the answer. You're definitely in, in a similar situation to being an underwriter. Sometimes we deal with a credit department in my world. That's, um, it's synonymous. I mean, they call us the same thing. So where you're coming from, you're going risk adverse, and the salesperson just wants to get the sale. So where I'm coming from is different than where the credit department's coming from, but they both have to work in uh, – they have to work together. To One get without the, right, the other, the whole thing shuts the down. The whole thing though. shuts down. Because so, if you guys are doing all the loans, you're going bankrupt. You're going you're doing bankrupt. doing the wrong loans. And if we're not there, if we're the only ones there, no deal's getting done because nobody's out there selling 100%. 100%. It. What are you smoking now, Crane? <laughs> I'm lighting up the uh, Adrian Original, which is from our sponsor, Altidus USA. Altidus USA? Altidus USA. One more time? Altidus USA. There it is. Altidus USA always features the uh, the second cigar that I Asian Room Original, which is a rebranding of a, of a previously highly rated cigar. So um, we'll have to feature that on, on podcast going forward. What are your thoughts on smoking a cigar to the very, very bottom? Oh, I typically do. You typically do? Yeah, I typically do. Do you get more taste from the very bottom As of it? As they're holding up their little nubs back there, and that's oh, not an innuendo. Nubs, that's, a lot that's, of nubs in the background. I like that. Yeah, that's not, that's not, they're, they're talking about cigars here. Do people, What are your thoughts on nub the cigar itself? 
Good. It's good Oliva product. I mean, is it? Does it all taste like the the bottom barrel of it? No, the, the whole concept there, just to go on a side tangent, is that it was a, basically a shorter cigar, about four inch cigar, wider. Four to dish. six inches, the way I like to look at it. It's a four inch cigar. You would think it's six, depending on how but, cold it is outside. Um, yeah, whatever. Um, it's it's fat, fatter ring gauge. As fatter, fatter, fatter ring gauge. Uh, it's supposed to be uh, in the sweet spot when you are smoking a cigar. So that was the concept behind it. You love sweet spots. I love sweet spots. I, you know, I'm listening to you guys talk about all this, you, the conversation <laughs> side of things, and going back and forth. It's, it's interesting how that turned into a conversation based on control. Well, that interactions, that that you know, the silence about how you handle yourself. The the biggest thing that I take from that, and I'm interested to see what your guys' viewpoint is on on, on this, is 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 not relinquishing control in a in a in a conversation or being that salesperson you know that's trying to get there yes that child that's trying to get there yes they want their their outcome to happen so they just go rapid fire they are now like we talked about like they're losing control of their behavior they're not they're not responding the way like if you <clears throat> if you truly want to first of all come to the truth that's one thing if you want to get your answer there are ways to go about that. It's not necessarily just berating and, and, and by, you know, the, the attrition of just like, I will beat you down until I'll be resilient and, and just com- and just be completely like just, again, rapid fire until you find like, all right, fuck, fine. Right. You're not trying to beat them down to oblivion. One of the reasons why I really uh, was looking forward to this podcast and having Brandon on was uh, we've had spirited conversations about a variety of topics. Yeah. And his points of view on things and mine are very different. And Brandon has the ability to take uh, different points of view depending on uh, how the wind blows. Yeah, whatever, but whatever works, really. Whatever works, whatever, really. Whatever you don't but think. That's he's what I'll give not you. trying to convince me in our conversations that I'm right or wrong. He's trying to give me enough information to make my own decision. And I think if your control is. I'm just going to use your, your girl as an example here, Steve. Liz is going to think whatever she's going to think, and you're going to think whatever you're going to think. And you can give her as much information as you want, but you can't control how she's going to feel about certain things. And at, and at that moment, really. That, that's people in general. But that's it's, people at, at in that, general. At that moment, yeah. Uh, so what I like about that is you can give people enough information to make their own decisions, but you can't, as much as we want to, control their actions or control their thoughts or you know one of the biggest things in our political discourse these days is uh you're not going to change someone's opinion all you can do is kind of give yours right now but i think you should i think one should thrive from that i I think that you know you're talking about you know politics and everything else and i'm not going to dive down that rabbit hole too too far third hour yeah third hour that'll be after hours no it's we go back to, or I go back to that whole thing of, you know, oh, you know, everyone's offended all the time and all that stuff. That's so much easier to be offended by. Very you know, easy to be offended. It's, 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 it's easier that way mentally, too, because now you, you can tie emotion into it. You can be upset. You can be mad. You can fire well, back. You can blame you can somebody. Stuff. But, I mean, I would think that it, it's, it's more constructive to, to truly learn that, that viewpoint, which I, that's something that I struggle with. You know, I don't. I don't always try to educate myself. I'll either remove myself from the situation, or remove myself from that conversation or that topic. And if it's unavoidable, or if I do want to actually uh, be a part of it, is that I like to listen. I like to listen to what people are saying. That, that's your point, Spencer. Is that Brandon? You know, when you're having a conversation with someone that um, now, now, granted, I mean, Brandon does it just like anyone else. There's there's plenty of times where he wants to make sure that his point is heard. I mean, and sometimes that is just purely saying, hey, he this is what I know. He learns more from listening. He, he already does. knows what he and knows. And you do too. And I think, you know, that's one of the reasons why we have viewers and, and listeners on this podcast is because people like to learn from other people. And it's easy to do when you're just sitting back and you're listening to it as opposed to being engaged in the conversation and you're, you're, like, you're a spectator because right. now it's just hopefully being absorbed. Even if you don't like what the person's saying, you are taking the time and you can always shut it off. You know, you can you can not watch that show. You can not listen to that podcast. You can not, you know, engage in that person. You can remove yourself from the situation. But more times than not, you, you see successful TV shows like or like the talk shows. You know what I mean? Back in Jerry Springer and stuff. Like it's it's a fucking train wreck. People like love watching that stuff, even though they disagree with everything on there. 
But a lot of times, in especially in today's environment, you're uh, reiterating your own bias. So you're yeah. saying, oh, they agree with me, so that's the way to go, versus listening to the other side of the argument. It's very difficult, in my opinion, not just for myself, but it's very difficult to say that you're wrong. Because, again, at that point, truly saying that you're wrong— You're pot committed. Well, yeah, but I'm saying it's truly saying you're wrong, That that's— that's having full control over yourself and over the conversation at that point because you are now contributing the fact that you're wrong if you truly think you are. Also saying, you know, I, I get what you're saying or I don't get what you're saying, but I'm going to communicate back that I, 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 I don't agree. And that's fine. You, you cannot agree with someone else, even if there's so much fact behind it. It's not that you're debating. It, it's more of the fact that I don't like it. I don't agree with that. I get what you're saying. There's a lot of facts to back up what you're saying. So I'm not saying you're wrong. It just, I, I would rather be something. And that's where it's like, again, you react to it. You, you, you don't grow do as a you person if you're just hearing your own echo chamber. No, you stop. Yeah. You stop growing as a person. I think people are afraid too. And it's, it's understandable. There, there, there's like a, there's a, a deep fear under people's kind of obstinance in things that can demonstrably be proved untrue that they believe. Right. Because, I mean, obviously being talking apes we're not going to understand the whole world there's just no way speak so, for yourself well spencer may but um we're spencer's evolved i believe i mean saying. you get whether it's religion philosophy politics whatever people have a worldview and certain things fit into that worldview certain things don't and there's certain things where if you if you go to them and you make a, a point that is is completely true you can prove it true and it goes up against some kind of foundational or support pillar of their worldview. It's not their truth. It's learning that one truth yeah. is not mm -hmm. worth bringing the whole structure of their worldview down because that's the ultimate lack of control. Like if we, if we got teleported to a different planet with different physics, different rules, we didn't know the inhabitant, we didn't know anything, that's the ultimate lack of control. And I think it's a fear of that type of abyss of understanding that people are really pushing back against in a lot of our political debates because they have a worldview that's dependent on certain things being true. And if you come to them, even if you're completely, um, uh, you don't come to them as an enemy. You come to them as a friend trying to say, hey, what you think here is not correct and it doesn't align with reality. It doesn't matter. Their reality. It's attacking their support structures that give them a worldview that allows them to understand the world and operate within it and if you pull that out from under them they're they're lost do you think do you think control. we're better or worse now like when i was growing up we didn't talk about religion we didn't talk about politics it just wasn't a part of who's the, we your family my family friends it just wasn't a part of our day-to-day -day. i mean if it was it was a very segmented part of the conversation it was okay that guy's super right wing that guy's super left wing but it wasn't as part of our day-to-day. -day. No. So do you think because we're more informed that makes us, I don't want to say better or worse, but do you think our views are more malleable now or less? I don't, I don't know, first of all, that we're more informed. I think we, might, be, we ha might have more data, but that says nothing as to whether it's true or not because there's just a ton of data out there that's bullshit. There's a ton of uh, you know, proven truths that are bullshit. And... I think ultimately it's, it's more of a detriment because, like you had mentioned with people just watching things that reiterate their own beliefs, and then the social media algorithms that say, oh, this guy really yeah. likes guns. Let's give him more guns. Oh, he really likes Trump. Let's give him more Trump. He really hates Trump. Let's give him more hate Trump. It, it creates these bubbles of thought, and eventually you get things like you know, whether you've got the alt-right versus Antifa. It, it just it segregates people into the point where they're no longer talking. And if, if you don't they're just talk, reiterating what they've heard. Yeah. But what if you don't, if you don't talk to your opposition, you're going to have to fight them at some point. So I think, I think ultimately, you know, religion and politics are off limits for polite discussion. That's fine for a time, but the time's going to come where there's no room for talk anymore. You're just going to have to fight. Well, that, that we're not there everything. yet. I don't think we're that there. Everything. Give it a couple yeah. minutes. I don't think Give it a couple there. minutes. Let that sink <laughs> we'll in. See. Um, uh, it's interesting you say that because that's the way it, it always has been. And all the information is typically, unless you're actually doing the research, you're not going to have the, the hands-on information. 
Because you're saying it's false truth or it's it's false information or you know I'm it's not like, saying any particular. It. No, I'm, I'm just saying, saying I mean, a lot like, of, a lot of there's actual that like, yeah, that any, like even with like you know looking at it's not it's, it's not even just opinion or editorials. It's like actual studies, and then you, you know. Ten years later, the study comes back, and with new information, that something that was bad for you is now good for you, or well, it's vice some, versa, in right? Psychology, they call it the, um, it's something like the the recreation dilemma or something like that. In the last fifteen years in psychology, something like fifty to sixty six percent of the studies that have done that have led to papers being published and, yeah. and you know professional journals cannot be recreated. They're bullshit. They're shit studies. Yeah. But they have the stamp of approval from university. Well, they got funding. And all that. You have funding science is always evolving, right? Well, it is, it, but there's it, always an agenda. That's the thing. So, so my point is, is uh, maybe. No, no, I'm my just point saying is that science is, is always. I mean, there was a time where we thought the earth was flat and that was the rule of thought. And there's now still that thought. Uh, there's that weird documentary. Was it Steph Curry? That's hilarious, uh, by the way. Kyrie Steph Curry. Irving. Kyrie Irving, excuse Kyrie me. Kyrie Irving. Pardon me, Mr. Curry. I'm sure you're listening tonight. No, I love well, that you get all fired. Up. When, I think when, what when am I saying? T- what I was going to say is, is that any of these studies, any like when you're talking about like the the, the professors or like, people that are doing the research and everything like that, there's always an agenda. There's always an agenda, and, and a lot of times it's funding to get that. In my opinion, they say it's no, pure. One hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah, I think. Well, I think, people get into a certain field, and um, let's see if we can blow this up a little bit. Here we go, see, baby. See some more of that whiskey. We'll, I, mean, we'll I need see, some more whiskey. See who the here, audience yeah. really is with this one. 50% and I want to be, you are going to like this. this before. Th- thank you. Why don't you pour me one there? I will say there's a couple people going back and forth on the uh, the, the feed here, and uh, I, I think uh, yeah, why not? to this to the, what we're talking about is I, I think you need to uh, let go of your agenda, and you need to be able to. Uh, I'm not going to get into it, but it's well, Crane. This is an just, interesting just topic. Roll for you, out, man. guys. Just relax. You know. So control is an interesting topic for you. I mean, I, I've probably known you for uh, eight to ten years, something along yeah, those lines. Yeah. Do you feel like you've gotten better or worse with having control or letting go of control in your life? I think it's more of I, I think it's as, it's as you've gotten older. It's not. Um, I haven't gotten better at having control or letting go. Is that what you said? Yeah. Is that what you said? It's an interesting question. Can you repeat the question. No. Um, it is uh, something Ooh. where. I do I do not recall. <laughs> I'm just here so I don't get fined. Brown, I, I think it's something where um, <laughs> I have... They both played good games. I find myself actually struggling um, where where that I think I've got a better handle on a lot of things and then something happens and it's just like, what the fuck was that? Because you think you got a handle on more things than you did years ago? And now if one no, thing kind of goes away, now you don't? No, I think it's more of uh, it's that acceptance. It's not letting go of control. It's 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 that whole thing of like the serenity prayer. But it's you know basically it's it's con- that's exactly right. That's all. Yeah, I was uh, like Frank Costanza, serenity now. Different. Um, it still holds up. It does, just like Festivus. I think that it's for the rest of us. For the rest of us. Um, I I have I have tried and tried and tried, um, and it's interesting in these days. And I'll, I'll use this because we use this 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 form or this medium as far as Facebook to get this this podcast out there. One of the things that Facebook uh, introduced uh, in more recent times is the the memories thing. So if, if any, if you're obviously if you're watching this on Facebook, you guys know this is that you you see Facebook memories every day. I get you have this many memories with this many people, um, like. Uh, Nate showed Brandon before the podcast from six years ago a picture that he had had popped up on a on a memory, and it's like you see that, and it's like all of a sudden you're, you're transported back. I think that's great, by I, the way. I, I really enjoy it, and obviously you have to be involved in that that medium of Facebook. You know, you you would have had to have post or be involved in something to see those memories. So there's there's value in being involved in whatever your your take is on on social media, but. Um, I'll say one of the things that I've learned is that I'll see pictures of myself. I'll see some of the growth I had five, six years ago, or whatever it was, seven years ago. Not not just physically. It's it's just everything. Things that I was posting, things I was interested in, things that I forgot about. Um, so I would say I have gotten better at uh, accepting that I'm going to make mistakes, which is a control, which is a control issue. Um, I think it's a it's, it's a tough struggle to realize that. Yeah, you don't have control over things, but you realize that you know you fucked up or I succeeded, and by succeeding at that point, looking back, I haven't followed through with that. I have not continued to do so. You think you so, learn more from losses or wins? 
personally, I think it's 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 a it's a fifty fifty there. I think it's really? a fifty fifty. I think I mean the the easy answer for for uh, I would say if we we held a poll, I think that most people would say I learn more from losses. I, I learn more from from failures. Um, I think it's because when you're in that win mentality, uh, you don't you don't necessarily learn from that win until you've lost again and or you look back. Or appreciate the wins as much. Well, you know, it's something that I I, I said uh, I don't know what episode it was. It was not that long ago. Where three <laughs> that. Um, you don't realize some of the lessons uh, from a win until you realize that you're struggling now and you can learn something from yourself five years ago when you were actually doing better, when you were eating better, when you were like, you were more mentally sound, you were taking care of yourself, you were, you had not control, but you felt like you had more more control because it was, it was like a well-oiled machine. And then all of a sudden you eat a little bit like less healthy or you get less sleep. You drink more, you, you slack off at work. You add sour cream to your Chipotle, add sour cream. And you're not just looking for healthy fats. You're just adding it for flavor. That's not never a good thing. Anytime you you add for flavor, it's typically, that's a, that's a, a choice. Have you had Chipotle sour cream? Yes. What do you think? Tastes like sour cream, just not that good. Uh, a, little, a little runny. Wow. It's kind of runny. Might, might take the next couple plays off. <laughs> just throws the mic down. Fuck this place. It's bullshit. <laughs> I'm headed to Chipotle. Now that we're lying to each other in the middle of the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're lying to each other. No, I think, you know, as I, as, and, and you guys, you give me that, you know, the answer to that. I, I know that I have, I have succeeded in a sense that even recently, I, I still struggle with, um, the concept of what I can and cannot control. And it is a very, very taxing and very, very frustrating uh, concept at times. But when I, I have a good handle on that, that is typically when I, I feel most at ease. And it's not because I have more control over things. It's that, that concept of, you know, you can come at me with anything and I know, like, like the 10 event example you said, you can come at me with like, hey, we're going to completely fuck up your day. It's like cool, man. Let, day, let's, your let's, week, all of your planning. Yeah, let, let's talk about this. Like, you know, I can't. You know, I, let let me get your side of it. But it's how you handle, how you control yourself in that circumstance, as opposed to reacting in a sense where it's just like again shooting from the hip. That, that Steve Jobs thing, like where whether it's actual silence, like you were talking about, Brandon, or it's like literally silence, silence is nice. But I'm saying the concept of that move is truly reflecting on yourself or within so that your next move is is in the effort of getting to that greater good make ba- well, basically uh, having control on on your side while also relinquishing relinquishing control, well, you control of the other the person destiny of 300 people that day yeah that, that day yeah but that's one of the uh come to jesus crossroads you don't things. know who you affect all the time you don't know who you affect in the, in the grand scheme of things that's a blip on the radar but that could have gone a variety of different ways. True enough. Do you find that you have a bigger problem with recognizing what you can and can't control, or you recognize it but you can't give up the attempt at control of like the things that, that you That's can? That's a good question. Well, right? for me, if you're you're asking me, yeah, that to build off of Spencer's question. Spencer, I mean, well, no, to build no, off no, that it's, question, it's all I, about crane. No, yeah, right. <laughs> never, never, never. Um, I would say that I, I struggle more with. Um, how did you word the two? I, I would say, do you do you struggle more with recognizing the things that you do and do not have control over? In which case, you can't accept your lack of control because you don't even know that you don't have it. Or do you recognize the things that you do and don't have control of, but even knowing that, have a hard time giving up control of the things that you don't have control of anyway? I, I, I would say that I struggle mostly with... Um, kind of in between those two that when i when i lose and i you guys all joke that that know me but when i lose focus focus when i lose focus on the first part you know knowing what i what i do and don't control right when i lose that it, it's it's simply i'm 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 going at a certain pace that i i've i've lost that 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 the mental calm the 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 basically taking things um at face value, taking things like realizing there's other people's agendas out there, not just mine, but I'm in the moment. So I'm more focused on my agenda. I'm more focused on what, and it's not like a selfish thing. It's just, it's, it's a mode for me. It's a mode that like, 
I don't have time for this bullshit. And so you're responding to stimulus rather than rather than actually recognizing, all right, I can catch that that's ball. That's the struggle, yes. That, that ball's going to hit me in the face, so I better move. Yeah, yeah, that's the struggle or for me. That, that's what I struggle with most. Get a rag. That, that, <laughs> that's what I struggle with most, probably. Is, I, think is that, I, mean, I think that's, uh, I mean, I, I think that's normal. Common? I think it's 100% normal and, and common. Cause, so ask Spencer the same thing. Hey, Spencer, same <laughs> <Hey>, question. <laughs> do, you to, do you want me to repeat the question? I can recognize it coming my way. But over the years, I just realized that that ball or balls are coming my way. And I have uh, relinquished that control and be like, certain I can only control what I can control. And I apologize if I've already said that. But that is my – when I saw the topic tonight, yeah. that is my so – Like a mantra you keep coming back to? Say that again. What's the I T-shirt? I can only control what I can control. I am not the center of the universe. I am just a – person in the universe in this you know big ball that's traveling the world at you know 300,000 miles an hour whatever it is uh, that the world does not revolve around me and once I came to that and that has that has been more recent than anything else that I have chosen uh, to adjust to that and to relinquish control and for me that gives me more peace that whatever's going to happen is going to happen and let me deal with it from there that that's how I remain like a duck on water. That's how I remain my calm. That's how I get my peace. And, you know, whether you're talking to a girl or talking to your friends, um, I can't control how, whatever I say now, I can't control what you respond to. Mm-hmm. I can try to influence it, but I have no control over what you're going to say next. Like when we played that game, would you rather, would you rather, yeah. I was dead set on, I'm right. How could anyone say that they would fight an alligator, or fight a bear, whatever it was? What was your answer again? Uh, I think it was the alligator for the zigzag purpose. Like I can, I can zigzag. On the ground? Well, I like figured not, the, not in the water. Oh, I could zigzag water. I'm very amphibious. Not as much as an alligator. <laughs> what's your not What's your typical much? lap time? What's your typical you lap have, time? Do you have flippers on and, and goggles? Oh, I'm not prepared for this battle. Not at all? No. So your business suit? When was the last time you shaved? Rain, rain, rain went. Oh, you go for the eye. I go, what do you yeah. mean you go like around rain, the gators teeth? Gators don't care about the eyes. So I think they do. No. Are we talking about gators or crocodiles? Uh, either pick one. I tell you what, this was not the easiest game to play with Crane. I'll tell you that right now. Why, <laughs> Why is that? Because would I rather fight the alligator on land, fight the alligator on water? I feel water? like you have to know the whole situation. Right. Uh, but in, in my Yeah, I'd like to fight a bear in water. So he tried to get as much control of the situation as possible. There might be good swimmers. I'd like to, hear, to, to actually hear your, your view on control. Do you think you have control over most situations? This is uh, great. The uh, short answer is no. So, However, I think that you can, can have <laughs> control of yourself in most situations. That's, barring, that's the struggle. That's the struggle, Barring truth Brandon. serum or you're hammered or you've gone nuts. If the, if the waitress takes 15 minutes to grab your drink, are you, hey, it is what it is. The waitress is just going to take longer than I want. It depends on where I am. If I'm, if I'm by myself and I went for a quick lunch, I'm just walking out and I don't give a shit. I also have a follow-up question, Fido, Brandon. I embrace it. Uh, whatever. When you know? was the last time you experienced truth serum? Uh, 1984. <laughs> Harry Buffalo, Westerville. Which we do have a, 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 an event coming up at Harry Buffalo on uh, August 8th, if you guys are interested. Solid plug. Hey, man. Thank, hey, thanks for the lob shot Welcome there, bud. back. <laughs> no problem. I was letting you guys go. I mean, what do you want me to do? I, I enjoy this. Do a commercial? <laughs> um, where were we? Do you have control over people that you disagree with? Um, to a, no, like it, control I, how? I think, hang on, hang on. I think control we need how? to define our terms a little bit. Yeah, if I was going to say control a conversation, how. I think the you know the sky is blue. You think the sky is orange. Whatever it is, do you have any control in that debate? Now, if somebody thinks the sky is orange when it's blue, then no, There's, their eyes are fucked. If up. someone disagrees with you, religion, uh, philosophy, politically, do you have any control in how they th- how they walk into an argument? How they walk into it? If I've never met them before, no. How they walk out? How they walk out? Yes. Okay. Not control, how? but I have. No, how, I can how, have a significant how? influence because let's say I'm talking to a uh, say I'm talking to a Muslim. I can approach that belief with respect, or I can completely denigrate it. 
Well, it's and not then, the then, no, it's not the way, belief. It's the person, right? So that's the that's the difference in my well, opinion. No, but no, the person is bringing that belief with them, right? And they identify with it. So in that way, you have a certain amount of control about how people respond to you. Do you try and, to think about where they're coming from first? Um, not not immediately. No, uh, you, I mean I think of conversations like boxing matches. Round one is just throwing jabs just to get the distance. Get the feel. Yeah, just get timing and distance down, see who the person is. How many, then, round, how many rounds are we going? Uh, we'll go 10, 12 Are, are rounds. you trying to knock out? Have you guys seen third? rough and rowdy yeah. boxing? Have no, you seen I, that? I, I, I was already drunk when he <laughs> reminded me about Three it. Three one-minute rounds. Go for the blow? Like just, just exhausted at the end? Oh, bare, bare knuckle? No, they have, they have gloves on. What? Uh, it's uh, put on by Barstool Sports, so that, that frames it. Real class act. Call her daddy is a uh, yeah. interesting podcast on that one. Okay, okay. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He was on it. He he calls the fights. If I, if I'm thinking of the right right guy from Barstool Sports, I'll take your word for it. All right, whatever. All right, let me ask you something. I Please. love this, and this is why I have these two on. Crane, stay out of it. You so, got it, buddy. <laughs> your initial question of you sit down with somebody, people on you the disagree feed about something. Saying, Forget the podcast. Listen to the comments. Like Jesus, you disagree with <laughs> something. Out of control. Do you have control or not how that person leaves? Yes. No, I'm, that's not the question. I'm just, I'm, set, I'm setting <laughs> it up. There was a question. Is, we're at round one. <laughs> <laughs> how much does it depend on your objective? If your objective, a, a, a lot. It if depends your objective a lot. is to piss somebody off, yeah, you, you have a I'm, lot of control over that. If that person doesn't have that's actually a good z- point. zen-like control of themselves. Because you, you can piss somebody off. Most people, barring maybe the Dalai Lama, you can find a way to piss them off. Dalai Lama. Are they prick. pissed off I've at you? Him. I played golf, uh, round you did golf not. with Dalai Lama at Kinsale the other week. Did he beat you? <laughs> you did not. Oh, he kicked the ball a lot. I'll tell you that. That guy yeah, lied to you. As you want. That guy lied to you. Yeah, he don't play from the tips. Brandon, I'll tell you that right holy. now. Brandon, <laughs> he can do you, whatever he wants. If you want to piss someone off, is that just out of spite or out of fun? Or what are you doing here? Uh, maybe, uh, maybe you have a larger objective. And are they pissed? Maybe that's are a they, tactic when you say a strategy. If they leave pissed, are they pissed at you or pissed at their, their belief? Uh, let's say that you're, you're trying to sleep with a girl. That's actually an interesting question. You're, you're, you're trying to sleep with a girl. So we're not talking about religion at this point. Well, no. There's, She's, there, the there girl needs, is religious. There needs to be a, a larger objective. Okay, okay. So to demonstrate a larger objective... Maybe the tactic that night yeah. is you piss this girl off by telling her things that her boyfriend did. You're now trying to sleep with him. you're trying to sleep with yeah, that girl. If, okay, if, okay. If the objective and you're is, talking to said girl. Ultimately, the objective is to. to I like this topic for the record. From friend zone to something else. For the record, I like this topic. And so maybe step one is cause tension between her and her boyfriend. And you. All right. You, so you're you, manipulating the situation yeah, at this well, point. Well, that's what control is. Not always. How would you how would you differentiate the two? Well, when we're talking about like control, like when we're talking about like what you have control over, you think that's all manipulation of like even yourself? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. I mean, it, it can't be a cinema. No, it doesn't it can't need, be a, need to be negative. Cinema. I mean, you. Um, no, I know. And manipulation you manipulate does. Your shower to wash up. So I don't manipulate yeah, you myself do. you, in the shower. You manipulate the knobs <laughs> and yourself. I'm not. You definitely manipulate, you manipulate yourself in the shower. The shampoo bottle. I might pee in the yeah. shower sometimes. But. Whoa! Whoa! Oh, gross. Use <laughs> you it all downstairs. Done. You've all done Never, it. Never ever have Bullshit. done that. Bullshit. Anyway, I think you don't it, get out, dry off, and then go pee. No, you just Spencer. Stand, do not. Oh, now we are lying on the podcast. Oh. Yeah, you, they can't hear you. <laughs> All right, so yeah, but manipulation has a negative connotation most of the time, yes. Not necessarily. Not, it, typically, it, it, I think it does. It depends. Well, allegedly. But anyway, you see what I'm saying? Irregardless. I do see matters. what you're saying, yeah, yeah. If, if I send you with a certain objective, uh, go get some milk. No. You have control over that subject or over that situation. You don't have control over the traffic. You don't have control over whatever. You come back and hand me the milk. Maybe I wanted that milk so I can put it in a big sock, whack you on the head with it. You would. Who's in control? You were in control the whole time going to get the milk. I was. But I had the longer-term objective and was able to manipulate you that way. Yeah, but it, that's one of those things. And I mean, I don't know where this conversation is going necessarily, but it's like who, we milk. both we both have control of our, our side. I think that's the, the bigger picture there, right? Well, you know, I'm, I'm still, trying to make you happy I'm still when you're just an asshole question, that wants to though. hit me with a fucking gallon of milk, I'm which still, I don't get. I'm still you put an- it in a sock, no, like I'm, a big sock? A like big a, sock. Like, uh, more of a pillowcase. I think a pillowcase would work. Yeah, yeah. It wouldn't it wouldn't drag as much. We're talking, uh, are we talking two percent or almond milk? All right. 
No, whole milk. Whole milk, you animal. <laughs> you are an animal. No. Is whole milk heavier than 2%? That's cream. That, that's heavy I cream. Like butter. Buttermilk. <laughs> washing up How did our days. views go up after that conversation? That's what I want to know. All right, I'm still answering his People question. People are sharing. The- what was the question? <laughs> the question was, if you sit down with somebody, do you have control over mm-hmm, how mm-hmm. they leave? And it depends on your objective. Or if you want control. Are you trying to educate? Well, I guess it depends. It control how, yeah. Normally when I have a conversation with someone, I don't have an objective. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes you, you've you done whatever your job, your career, your conversations enough that you know how the conversation ends. You know, if you're talking with somebody, sometimes you know how the conversation's going, and it's up to you to play the game enough to listen long enough to hear them out and realize where the conversation's going. Sometimes you don't know where the conversation's going. You know, we had a conversation uh, a couple weeks ago, and it was uh, – do you like learn more from talking or listening? Yeah. My perspective is I learn more from listening than talking. Cause I already know what I know. So my thing is I, I don't know what you know. So I want to learn more about where you're coming from. And eventually you will tell me the answers. And if we're having a debate about whatever, you will give me enough information that I know the answers to the questions that I have. You will tell me where the conversation goes. If we talk long enough. Well, but even in that scenario, you have you're going to run up against short term objectives. Sure. Like, let's say you say something that completely offends the other person. You can say if you recognize if you're conscientious, you recognize it. You can say, well, you know, fuck you. That's what I think. Or you can say, I apologize for offending you. I meant it this way. Maybe reword it. You're eliciting manipulation and control of the of the that scenario, because if you carry down the fuck you route, you, they're getting up and leaving. Whereas if you show a little consilience and, and consideration, yeah, they're going to stay. And did you manipulate or control I guess, them to stay? I, I guess I mean, in, sort of. in my situation, it's not always, my objective is not always to be right. No, but I think my, 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 run up right. these my, these my objective is to give them enough, uh, enough rope or enough stuff to, make them seem like it's their idea. So that's the manipulation piece. Like, that's super oh, well. Manipulative. That's like uh, Inception type of shit. Are you writing any of this down? This is gold. <laughs> all right. It's recorded, to, by the way. To write the, How many layers do you have to go into their dreams? It's like an onion. Three always. Yeah. Onion more, onion Three more always. of a cake. Yeah. Uh, freaky movie, by the way. Great movie. But uh, if I can uh, make it seem like it's your idea, and for you to... No, that's absolutely true. Yeah. So if I... But is that why you listen more because you're doing I that? Because you, you said two concepts there, by right. the way. You said two concepts. You learn more. I learn more. But then you said, if I can, like, then you introduced the, the concept of making it their idea. If I, which ask, is true. If it's, I ask it's absolutely enough, true. If I asked the right questions, and we talked about this with job interviews and things like that, if I was interviewing for a job, I would ask the questions so I knew how to respond. Absolutely. It's, it's pointed questions. Yeah. What is important to you in this position? You right. tell me, and then I can rephrase my answer. So that's important to you for this job, whether yeah. it's sales, whether it's that's whatever. That's communication in general, I feel communication like. Communication in general. Yeah. yeah but so the, let me ask you this stuff. Yeah, go ahead. You know, like as we're, we're getting towards, you know, the, the I don't want to say what, what mark we are, but we're getting, we can, we can talk about all this stuff and manipulating having different conversations but when it comes back to the, the topic of control let me ask you both because because spencer you kind of asked me that what have i gotten better at you know over the years or if you've gotten better no right i'll say this what have you guys each done over the last say five years you know you brought up the five year mark when you were thinking about the future brandon but like over the last five just years, like Stalin, right, five year just plans. Just like Stalin, that's a great role model. Um, I would say that like so you're thirty five, Junior, right? You're thirty five, right? Thirty seven. You're thirty seven. I Jesus. just wanted a round number for the, you know. Yeah, because the math's hard, like you yeah. said. But 22. so you're thirty seven. So at thirty two t- to thirty seven, and then and and Spencer, how old are you? Thirty seven. Thirty seven as well. So from thirty two to thirty seven, what have you actually we done? Because let's get something out of this. You know, after this conversation we, we've had, and I appreciate you guys. You know, this is one of the reasons I've had you guys on is because I, I we wanted to get you and Jake. Unfortunately, was not able to be here tonight. Um, but we had talked about that that two of the people that have been on the podcast uh, that are in the social circle that don't always necessarily you guys don't hang out together, um, and, and and you guys could. You know what I mean? Like this is this is definitely you have two 
two like-minded people as far as strength of mind and, and intention, in my opinion, that they're you got two good people, right, that can learn a lot from each other. So what have you actually done when, when on, the, on the concept of control? What, have you, what are, are tools or what have you actually been able to accomplish that have given you, like when you asked me, Spencer, um, have I gotten better? I assume that you guys have both, in your opinion, gotten better at the concept of control in your life or relinquishing control if needed. What are there, is there anything that the, any of the listeners can take from this that they can actually think about and improve upon if they are struggling with those, those situations that you, you've struggled with, Brandon, and you've struggled with, Spencer, in the past recent years in your 30s so we have listeners in their 20s we have listeners maybe younger than that but like 40s 50s 60s everyone is at different stages of life and in different stages of of the concept of control in their life and we all go through cycles what have you actually done to to get better or feel like you have a little bit more control over what you know you can or cannot have control over i'll I'll take it shortly and then i'm sure brandon can can elaborate on it but I think in my 20s, I definitely thought that I knew everything. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, in my early 20s, I knew nothing. And then in my later 20s, I thought I knew everything. Um, but as I've gotten older, I, I realized I know less and less. Even though, you know, my data, you know, even though where I, I have more information. You're listening all the time. I'm listening all the time. But I realize that there's way more information out there than anywhere. Uh, so in my case, it's the relinquishing of control. The I can't control their reaction to whatever I'm going to say. If I have good news, if I have bad news, probably definitely more with bad news. Yeah. A lot of times in my situation career-wise, I'm the messenger. So if I deliver bad news, I have control of I want them to hear it from me, but I can't control their reaction to the bad news but I can control how they receive the bad news. So in my situation, it's I'd rather be the one delivering the news and control the narrative than have them hear the news and then contact me with, hey, what's going on with this? I'd rather be in control of delivering, you know, especially the bad news because anyone can deliver good news. I'd rather be in control of delivering. This is not what you want to hear. What leads up to that, though? Leads up to it is that like and, what do you work on? Because I mean that's you're basically saying that you know you, you would rather be in control of of the delivery. Like so you're you're in the the um, I don't want to say protagonist, but it's like one of those, like you're you're the lead in that 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 dance. Right. Yeah. So I would say that in general, I'd say the lead up to delivering the bad news in the past, I would never want to deliver it. I'd never want the confrontation of it. Uh, and I would lose sleep over it. I get the anxiety, all that yeah, type yeah, of stuff yeah, and just leading to it versus kind of ripping off the bandaid. So if I can be in control of how we rip off the bandaid for me, that gives me a sense of control over the situation. Okay. And I've learned that I can control the narrative. And if I can control the narrative, then I can, I can't control their response to it, but I can at least control to how they hear the narrative. Do you feel like you've gotten like colder? I haven't gotten colder. I've or, just or realized more assertive that assertive in a negative way, not, not negative. I'm sorry, more assertive in a way that, that you, you aren't as open because you do. Want I, to keep I would that say I'm role. more open oh, okay. uh, versus less open that I, I want them to hear it from me. And if they have a, uh, a, whatever their reaction is, is going to be their reaction, but yeah. I want them to hear it from me versus hearing it second or third hand. or figuring it out by themselves or figuring out from themselves and then calling me and hey what was this why did this happen right i can at least exp- i can prevent their negative response by hitting it straight on and hitting things straight on and ripping off that band-aid's tough but it's a lot easier than sitting on negative information and you know it's interesting holding you, on to that yeah it's interesting you 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 absolutely like pinpointed that you're talking about business but Knowing you and I and hearing you like take away that disclaimer of business, yeah, that's that's not just business for no, you. That's life. That that's that's everything uh, in your life. That's everything. Yeah. And bad news sucks to deliver, but the quicker you do it, the better. Absolutely. I think your mind tends to ramp things up too. If you think about it, you stew over it over and over. The the reaction of the person hearing the news gets worse and worse in your head and you can't control the reaction then you handle it worse or you know 
So I think it's good to just get into it. So, so Brandon, what have you done in the last five years? Give it, you know, it's like, so if you're going to take anything from this, this, this topic part of the podcast, it's, you know, again, what have you learned and what can you share as far as how do you grow as a person so that you, what, you know, when you deal with the concept of control in your life, how have you grown in the last five years and what can you actually do to, to grow? Like what advice would you give? I think the, in this whole conversation, the main point that I would put on the table is the most important thing is understanding that you do have control of yourself and you will lose control of yourself as you forget that. And you, like you had stated before, you just start reacting to stimulus. So right. the, the best tactic that I found, I don't know if it was in the last five years, but you know, over time, the best tactic I found to constantly return to the uh, understanding that you do have control over yourself is use this silence on yourself. You know, the tactic that you can use with others, you should use it on yourself really every day. And um, Explain that a little. Like, I, I get it, but like practically, how do you do that? You sit down, you shut up, and you breathe. It's the same thing I said. Like I meditation? On the last pod. It, I mean, it is. Form of medication? Or it, meditation? I mean. Not medication. Yeah. Medication sometimes works, medication too. Sometimes medication works, yeah. too. Who knows? But don't go down that road sometimes. But, but that, that. So whiskey. That tactic of silence, it can be a power move. But if you use it on yourself over and over again, it gives you that that space to react consciously, especially with the forms of uh, of, of media and communication that we have now. There's a, right. a a history professor I had at school. He wrote a book. It was called The Culture of Time and Space, and he was talking about World War One and the effect technology had on it. Whereas prior to that, when everything's drawn by carriages and horses and shit yeah and it's taken by either a pigeon or you know somebody on a horse with a letter one king sends the other king you know fuck you your wife's a whore aggressive very aggressive that king knows that he could write a letter send it back to a horse and it's not going to get to the other guy for a month right there's that there's a little bit of space so time go to war with that so so yeah i mean those are fighting words for sure your wife's a whore, I think would be the proper well, That'd be the proper, pro- proper response. <laughs> but there was, there was that space to maneuver, yeah. that space to take a breath, the space for the court and the advisors to say, look, calm down. It wasn't that long ago that we, you know, we were relying on, not, not to that extent, but even like you know, writing a letter. Well, right. Put and it in it, the mail and it's like three and, days. I mean, you can type up an email real quick. If yeah. you're writing out a letter, which, I mean, some of the listeners probably haven't done because they're too young. Who knows? Right. Anyway. So I don't get too far off the topic here. As as World War One ran around, you had introduction of the telegraph, right. you had rail systems, you had uh, mechanized artillery. These things allowed the movement of arsenals and and, and uh, materials at a much quicker pace, to the point that it was just clockwork. It was you, you don't have to try to understand the mind of the other king that's talking shit. You have to understand where is his tank line. Because if it's 20 miles away, those things move five miles a day. That means he can be on your border in four days. That yeah. means you need to move your tanks to within three days of the border. Then he's going to do the calculation, say, okay. shit, they're within three days of our border. We need to move within two. And then boop, 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 clockwork. You know, now you're at war. The same thing happens in day-to-day life where when you're constantly responding to stimulus and yeah. don't give yourself that space, to just think about it, yeah. maybe let that emotion settle because we've got d- deep emotional systems that are designed to keep us alive, and we misinterpret the stimulus that comes to us yeah. as a bigger threat than it actually is, and we may respond with more hostility or anger than we need to. Being offended, and if you give that space, start with yourself before you use it as a tactic on others. Every day, you know, if you're all wound up, you had a shit day, and you're mad at this person that she's a bitch and you're just going nuts all over everybody, sit down for 10 minutes and just breathe. Shut up. Don't respond to what's in your mind. Let it happen. Don't try to push it out because that's just as bad. Let it happen, but understand how your mind is working and how that doesn't have to control you because that's what ultimately controls people. The the mind going out of whack and just responding constantly to stimulus, that's what controls people and takes control away from them as conscious people. Let me ask you, I mean, first of all, I want to say that was... That would be a good transition, Crane. No, what I want to say first is that (laughs) I love how, how, uh, and I hope you guys appreciate the way that Brandon's mind 
he it, it thinks, you know, like, so like at one point he went from, you know, what have you done in the last five years to, to improve upon yourself, you know, and, and, and gain control. Or I didn't like, properly you know. answer the question. <laughs> no, you actually did properly answer the question. It was just We're that all of a sudden we went one. to olden days of, of some Your. king's wife is a whore. <laughs> Like that that's the way that he circled circled back to answering like hey in the next five years if you're struggling with this think about you know when 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 everyone was basically on horse and they were going to war and they basically started over your wife's a whore basically <laughs> correct <laughs> no i i actually i love that i i absolutely do i, I think that uh the, the different ways that you think about all that stuff i want to ask you though brandon what is yours, and Spencer, this is to you. I'm going to ask one more question before we kind of close it all out. Is with all of this, you say that, you know, this is when you point at your, your head and your mind, and this is where it all it stems from, this is where it's all rooted. Is there any effort or is there any, um, I guess, benefit? Because we talked about it when we had Grant on here a while back. Grant, uh, uh, who was a life coach. Very positive guy. Very positive guy. He's moved uh, out to California. I really appreciate that podcast. But, Good place for him. Um, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, one of the things that, that I had talked about that night, and he, he actually encourages his clients to do, is at some point of the day, um, you know, look in the mirror. When you're doing all of this, this, this meditation or – if you're struggling, I, I, I brought it up that when I was having a, a difficult conversation on the phone and I was at my house, I would find myself almost recentering, if you will, like, you know, taking control of, of my, my actions and my, my emotions was getting in front of a mirror and, and getting out of my head, you know, almost like realizing that, you know, like t- t- going third person, if you will. Yeah. Do you, do you see any benefit, Brandon or Spencer? In, in doing that so sometimes it's like when you're always like dealing with control you're, you're face to face with someone but if you actually are, are taking a moment for yourself to to regain control of your actions at the very least if that gets you there absolutely yeah now i've done that on it's like dr- a harsh reality you're like you're not just in your head anymore you're, you're yeah. looking at yourself in the mirror yeah i think if that if that gets you to the spot where you're no longer wrapped up in kind of the machinations that your mind is always doing yeah then hey whatever if that works fine so I find mean, what works for you. Right. You know, and I think, I, think, I think traditional meditation would work for most people. But if it's looking in a mirror, even, even like all this crystal shit, people are into crystals and all that, I don't think there's any magic there. But if you have a crystal and it's, you know, maybe red is for good vibes or whatever, and you sit and you stare at it for 15 minutes and you forget, you know, all the, everybody that pissed you off that day. It's more the uh, method. Whatever, I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. You have your crystals. Fine, you know, find some method to. If that gives you good vibes, go for yeah, it. Whatever, whatever well, I think works a for big it. Big sort. I mean, and, and you know more of the history of this, but like with meditation, one of the things is like actually trying to achieve, if, if you will, like you you have that out of body experience, you right? Concentrate you know, on you, you, breathing. You, 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 All your uh, uh, yes, no. If, you, if you're trying to achieve it, you never will. What the but I the think that's will tell you, I, I think that's the, the the some kind of nirvana enlightenment. Yeah, yeah. and I think there's something to it, and I'll, I'll, I'll give my opinion of it. Is obviously is that it, there is a a quick way to have an out of body experience is actually to look in a mirror. Uh, I was going to say drugs, but yeah. well, drugs, yes, but I mean, too. I'm saying like you can look in and look in a mirror, and then you see what everyone else is seeing, and it's interesting. I I had some a uh, uh, great reflection moments, not. No pun intended, Spencer, but of talking on the phone to someone, having a difficult conversation, and realized that I was losing what I was trying to to communicate. And when I got in front of a mirror and, and started talking, it was like I was presenting myself in, in the way I wanted to present myself, as opposed to letting go of it. Now, when you letting go this, of control. Did you see like, oh, my shirt doesn't fit right? I got a no. little chubby. Or did you see? No, I looked eye to eye with myself. Look, this yeah. guy looks has angry, never looked this chubby guy in a mirror for the record. Never. No, uh, yeah, basically, clearly I thought I was handsome, right? I mean, that was one right, of the things. Okay. All right. Granted, but <laughs> were you were you when you looked in the mirror? Were yeah. you recognizing your physical appearance? Or kind of the vibe that you were, were, were you looking yourself in the eye. Like you looked. I at, wasn't flexing. If that's what you're you asking. Look at yourself. You're like, oh, no one was asking I that. I look but. fucking angry. <laughs> or, um, or I look. I look timid. Or I look like unsure. So I've used this technique several times, and and uh, it's it's kind of different. It's it's, it's basically there, there's the emotion showing in my face that maybe I wasn't trying to convey. So I realized that I had lost control of that part of it. But it was more just like looking eye to eye and and realizing um, what I was presenting to the other person. Through my voice, yeah, yeah, 
Yeah, absolutely. So it's not like, you know, I wasn't like, I wasn't like looking, oh, my, my shirt doesn't fit, right? Blah, 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 blah. I wasn't like looking at that. It was literally just like it's seeing like your, that. Your affect on people. Well, that, that's yeah. your way to yeah. control of the action of the conversation. That's your just way of recentering yourself. Fair enough. Absolutely. Yeah. Cool. So, uh, you know, I, I want to thank you guys for being here. Of course. So going into this part, I want to thank a couple of things. You know, I'm, I'm, are you guys smoking? What are you smoking? I'm smoking uh, number two. The aging room? Yeah. You guys smoking yeah. that? What do you guys think of the aging room original? Uh, I like the box cut, personally. Yeah. I mean, I yeah. like the feel of it. Uh, is this less mild than the first one? Less mild or more? Like, are you saying fuller or are you thinking milder? Milder. Yes. So it is, it's more mild. Yeah, it's milder, I think, than, than the first one. Um, Strength-wise, it's not that far off, but... Um, I'd say flavor-wise, it's not quite as in your face. So I think the Tatawahe and the beginning uh, had a really clean burn. I like the spice that Tyler kind of yeah. mentioned with it. Um, this one, I think, is a good second cigar where it's just kind of nice and easy. It goes with everything. Flow and it goes with everything. Yeah. I like it, too. I mean, I don't I don't have really a lot to add on the cigar front, but I think it's, it's similar to the Tatawahe. Um, not as much spice. Not, as, not as complex or spicy, I think, but... I still like it. It's a good I smoke. think it's something that we can actually feature as a, oh, a featured cigar and go cigar, a little bit more into. Label. Yeah, there's a little bit more of a story for Aging Room, which we can get into on another podcast. But uh, you know, uh, I want to thank Altidus for that one. Altidus USA, who's gonna we're renegotiating a, another year of, of sponsorship. So, J- Josh and, and Paul, thank you very much. Uh, I also want to thank Tinderbox for the Tatawahe, and I'm, I want to thank all the, the studio audience and. and uh, Dustin, Nate, and and uh, Tyler, especially Hilljack. for contributing. Hill Jack and and his his lovely girlfriend for being here as well. It was nice to have a female audience. You, why are you looking she, at me? She was killing it. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And uh, and then also BS Cigar Company. So stay tuned for all that stuff. But you know, let me close it out at, at this this part is when we go into the topic part of it. Having having you two on here talking about the control aspect of. of of life it's it's very interesting to hear different perspectives because i know that i will say for myself that i have over the years and even recently even even today i, I struggle with losing control but not in a sense that i, I lose control and just like freak out, out. i wouldn't say out of control but i would say that there are things even on a daily basis that if you take the time to um Look back and you and, and what you were asking earlier, guys, about you know my biggest thing is 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 recognizing what I do and don't have control over. But my biggest, I guess, my biggest challenge is is reminding myself or staying focused on the fact that you know going through the day, you you do realize that you only have so much control over your the outcome of the day, and if you're you're you're, you're putting effort into your actions and your interactions with other people, then you can only have so much disappointment or so much happiness, you know what I mean? But hopefully it's more happiness and, and contentment that you are at that point where you are, at the end of the day, you, you're you happy with what you put out there as far as your effort. And that's what I think I've improved on and I continue to, but I've, I've also struggled on a daily basis and minute by minute sometimes that I, I don't always – stay in control because I let go or I get in a mode or I get in a, in a mood or whatever. And I think that that's natural. It's yeah. just about recentering yourself and, and, and realizing what the balance is that you could actually have somewhat control. And when you don't have control of certain parts, of it, if it's going to rain, you know, you go outside and you're like, I don't want it to rain. It's like, that's a great equalizer. Kylie was talking about that earlier when I was talking to her um, in, in person was that, you know, that is one of the great equalizers. When you think about control, it's like, if you want to try to control the weather, that is a great realization that you are so small in the overall control of your surroundings. Mm-hmm. Insignificant. Unless you have harp. The beer? No. What is it? High altitude <laughs> something array? I forget. I don't All know. Right. It's a conspiracy theory. Oh, okay. We'll get okay, into gotcha. it later. We'll do a conspiracy it's episode. It's a weather control weapon. Absolutely. We'll smoke Illusion cigars and talk about conspiracy theory. Uh, to finish off on... Uh, I think you're going closing comments here. Yeah, yeah. All right. To finish off on my end, uh, what you do have control of, and and I know it's a, a cliche, but you do have control of your attitude. So if someone asks you, how's your day going? You can say good, bad, or kind of go into it. And I think if you go into the day, and I do think you have control of your own happiness, where if you say, how's your day going? It's good versus it's bad. And here's all things that's right. If you keep yeah. saying it's good and things like that, 
you naturally can portray that positivity when you meet with other people, when you get with other people, and they can kind of feed that vibe off of you. So I do think you have control over that. Over the weather, I mean, it's been hot for a while, but, you know, it's going to snow in a little bit. Don't so, don't talk about well, it. Well, here's where I'm going with it is <laughs> I don't I no longer complain about man it's it's 85 and sunny so hot yeah because you know in a couple months it's going to be 32 and uh and snowy so i think you have control of your own attitude i think you have control of your own outlook in life sure and i think if in my personal experiences if you realize that you don't have control how other people respond to you and you just realize that they're going to respond or have a reaction to whatever you say or do and realize that that part's out of control that's a very freeing feeling. Absolutely. So that's that's my thoughts on control. Yeah. Brandon, do you have anything to close out there? Uh, it'll, it'll and I'll take a, a, I need to fill my glass yeah. for the, the final cheers. I encourage yeah. you guys to do the same. Yeah. You've earned it. You've earned oh, it. thanks. Oh, uh, thanks. For, oh, you're you, gonna, I thought you were going to pour it. Oh, no. Oh, I'm, no, I'm, go I'm, ahead and talk. talk. Oh, I thought you could do both. Teamwork. Um, the only thing I have is uh, life will remind you over and over again, you don't have control. Uh, only thing you can really do, try to control yourself. Whatever your method is, whether it's meditation, Man. Oh, now I have to pour you one. Yeah. <laughs> um, I lost my train. Um, yeah. <laughs> you've only got control over yourself, so figure that out. Whether Whatever method, if you want crystals, you want to meditate, you want to look at yourself in the mirror, focus on that because you're not going to control the world. So just give up on that. And, and I'll... I'll <laughs> give so, up is the... So Brandon's <laughs> message is get, get yourself some crystals. Crystals and <laughs> maybe uh, maybe a dime bag. <laughs> yeah, dime bag of, of crystals of uh, magic eight no. ball crystal meth. No, Sorry. no, no, hang don't on. do drugs. <laughs> or what? What I'll just add to that as we let me add. Brandon will add to that because I don't want to end it with give up <laughs> or crystal meth. Never give up. I'd say relinquish a control that you already don't have, and then you'll be. It'll be a lot easier to control the things that you do have. Perfect better <laughs> you're happy with that you can uh, you can sleep tonight i'm happier with happier it. with that you're not happy i don't know about happy i don't think you're ever happy but um I'm not really sad either yeah so. you're right in the middle you're, you're right real that, you're right real that, mediocre right in that sweet spot yeah that's what you call it <laughs> um I, I i will say one more uh aspect of all of this is that whether or not you feel like you are in control god damn it kyle you ruined it <laughs> lighter drop um no we talk about control we talk about all the aspects of it we talk about reacting we talk about you know when you you feel like that how you you handle conversations so my biggest thing when i go into it when i when i'm thinking about control and say i i feel like i have lost control and i'm starting my day it's a self-motivation thing that i really need to push myself sometimes to um Again, we talk about all the time on this podcast is, is recenter, refocus, and think about the balance of your day. And, and you guys have hit a lot of those points is that you realize that you only have certain things that you can, can control, but there is an action there. There is a, a actual um, a purpose that you have now determined upon yourself that you're going to go through that day and, and do exactly that. You're going to control the things. It's not just that you have control. It's that there is a, there's an action part of it, that you, you live that day going into it, that no matter where you're at at that point, if you're, you're feeling good about yourself, you're feeling bad about yourself, but it's like that day, it's just like you can't change. You can't change what happened. You can't change the fact that, that another day has been given to you and that you're going to go forward through that day and you have, you have a choice. Either you're going to take control of the things that you can control and, and, and relinquish control of the things you can't, or you're going to try to control everything, or you're just going to like give up and just be like, today sucks. And you were saying it, Spencer, is that you can make a choice to continue almost like to convince yourself if that's what it takes. If you say it enough times, you'll believe it. Absolutely. But that's a choice and that's an action that you really have to, to realize that that's an important part of your day. So. Um, I'll, I'll leave it at that. You guys good with this, uh, leaving at that point. And I appreciate you guys being on this. Um, and again, thank you guys. Thank you all the support team. And thank you guys for tuning in. Um, cheers. cheers guys. Bourbon BS podcast 78 next week. We do have, uh, Angela and AJ. We had to reschedule. Sorry for, for doing that, but, uh, we will have them on next week. We're going to be talking about, um, if nothing else changes, if they don't need to reschedule again, talking about being, 
uh, in front of a crowd performing, basically presenting yourself. So it'll be interesting because we've got someone that is a business owner. We also have someone that is a actual performer as well, where he's a, a singer uh, that, that performs in front of audiences. So looking forward to that podcast. We will see you guys next week. Thank you very much.